All right, I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> but welcome, guys. 24 people in the room. This is the Level Up Show, episode 36. A very exciting week because we're going to be talking Gamescom 2014. Had two great conferences this week. I would say rivaling E3 for sure. Yeah. Um, and if you missed our Tuesday show where we went all out, you're going to love tonight because we got a lot to talk about. Uh, we are a gaming dedicated talk show. We're on every Sunday. I am Andrew, my co host Mike, and tonight. We have Anthony over here, Brother Anthony, in the chat room with you guys as Brother Anthony. And of course, as always, we got Kristen says be nice in the chat room. They will Venice. be talking Venice also. They'll be talking with you guys all night, moderating, uh, keeping you guys entertained, and also trying to feed us, you know, questions and stuff from you guys. Yeah. Um, Mark is not here just because no. I think uh, he's Don't just busy. Say why. He has a lot, he has a, something that he needs to get done tonight. He's which is fine. Going on. We can't. Yeah, I, I would not be surprised if at some point you see Mark where just make an appearance in the chat room. That's yeah. usually how he does things, so. But for tonight, I'm sure Brother Anthony here can fill his shoes. Oh, I don't know about fill his shoes. Fill his beanie, maybe. Yes, there you go. Spill his beanie, that's a little better. But, uh, that sounds really dirty. Kind of a little bit, but okay, forget that. What's going on with everybody? How's everybody doing? Awful. Awful? Why? No, that's actually completely false. Okay. I'm just in a bad mood now. Damn it, Ellie. And uh, Ellie. And Ellie. Yeah, it's been a long time, but you finally played The Last of Us Left Behind. I did. I did. And there were some people in here that caught me playing it. They were with me the whole time with the magical pants and the magical backpacks. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a good time. It was just, it definitely uh, it definitely changes your mood that you're in. Yeah. The Even time. though you know what's coming if you played The Last of Us, it still hits you with, like, a ton of bricks. Yeah, and that's, the, and that's the thing about it. It's funny, because I was even saying at the end of the stream, you know, it'll be up on YouTube for everybody, everybody to watch. But, you know, even though I knew what was coming, it was still, like... Damn. So. Yeah, I know. But uh, besides just like the story of it all, what do you think about the little gameplay additions that they had, such as distracting or kind of going after the human enemies with the clickers? Yeah. So I mean, I, I even said, it was funny because I felt, I felt dirty. Okay. Like I was like, I feel bad. Like not. I mean, if I'm killing you, you know, that's one thing. Like I feel like that's like you know, classic style, like, to take another man's life in combat is the most, you know, gracious reward or something like that is one of the quotes from, you know, back in the day. Okay. You know, but now I'm sending them, sending monsters after them, and it's just like, I'm just being a bitch. But, I mean, those are the humans from the, David's camp, the, so. Right, and, and I mean, the, the mechanics of it were really cool. I like being able to do that, and, you know, it definitely opened up the gameplay better. There were a couple times where it was like, huh, well, that worked better than I thought it was going to, and, yeah. you know, so it was really nice. I did like, I really like the addition of the uh, little mini game. With the uh, fighting. Oh, there's so many mini games in that, yeah. which are pretty cool. But that's, yeah. uh, I don't want to go too far just in case it spoils it for anybody. But you're talking about the arcade, I think. Yeah. Right? They've got a pretty cool arcade moment. They've got a few little mini games with uh, bricks, throwing bricks. They've got yes. a cool little Halloween shop at one point. Yes. A lot that of cool was stuff. actually really good. I had a good picture from that, too. So. What else have you been playing this week? Um, well, actually, I, I got Danielle to start getting really into uh, Rogue Legacy. So okay. I've been playing that a lot. I finally beat the second boss. Uh, or my second boss, I guess. I went after the uh, ghost in the forest area. Mm -hmm. So I have two down. So I'm still plugging away at it. I think I'm on level like 91 or something like that, 92. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm getting up there. Not as high as you. Yeah. Uh, Andy, I know you don't really play games per se, but we talk about movies on here too. Anything you've watched or want to talk about this week? Not really. I mean, I still haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. We, slacking. We, we all, all have not seen Guardians of the Galaxy. No, yeah. not we all. Like, well, Mike has. I'm talking about us. I just saw. I'm way behind. I just saw 22 Jump Street. That was. Pretty, oh, that's pretty. That's pretty relevant. It just like came out. What, like almost. I wanted to see it. I haven't That's seen good. it at all. So you know, whatever. Yeah, it was funny. That was good. I pirated Captain America. I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> no, do not say that. <laughs> but that's another one we all need to watch. Oh, you saw it in the theaters, though. Yeah, that was fantastic. We have not seen that. I heard. That was must say. Like yeah, well, you're the we're worst. busy. We're busy, man. I don't worst. want to spend all that money on a movie, man. Yeah. I do want to see Guardians. I do want to see Boyhood. Uh, I, and, you know, I kind of want to see Teenage Mutant Ninja, Mutant Ninja yeah, Turtles, yeah, yeah, but yeah. not enough to spend money no, on I'll it. I'll wait till it comes out. But, uh, hey, you're playing something cool. really cool. I'm, I'm playing... Keep missing your stream for it. A few things really cool. Uh, are you talking about The Swapper? Yeah. The Swapper is... The game we uh, Wild Game appeared not too long back, yeah. um, probably like three or so weeks ago, and it's done by Face Palm Games, which is cool. And it's a sci-fi side-scrolling puzzler where you use a cloning tool in order to solve puzzles. Uh, hopefully, a few people <coughs> here have seen me play the game on Twitch. Uh, I've Do done like it four days so far, and I think it's excellent. It really yeah. is a great game. Worth twenty dollars? 
Easily. And first of all, I only spent 15 I think, on it. Oh, that's right, because um, you got the discount. Yeah, I got a discount on it. If, for 15 it's definitely worth it. The puzzles are very challenging, but never frustrating. Always really fun to solve, and they make you really feel... They make you feel intelligent when you do right. solve them. It's like, it's like, oh man, I can't believe I just did that. Um, especially some of the ones where I solved them like really quickly, and I'm like, I have a feeling that should have been a lot harder than it was, but I feel so intelligent right now. <laughs> right. Told um, is pretty cool and very mysterious. Uh, I don't want to go. Figured out what the ending is yet? No, I, I haven't figured out what the ending is, and I, I don't know if I'm going to figure it out. It's very, very bizarre. Um, very deep. Uh, it's just bizarre. It's, it's. I don't want to say deep. Um, it's, it hasn't really gone into territory beyond what I was talking about. You are on this space station that's damaged, there's one other woman on it. You have these things called the Watchers that you keep getting signals from in a way, stuff going into your mind, and you start to understand that the Watchers are these rocks that exist on the planet that seem to have a subconscious, and the space station that was there, um, all the crew that was there before you came, they were experimenting on the rocks and trying to figure out what this electric, you know, signals and stuff meant as far as its consciousness. Um, I have a feeling there's a lot more to it than that, though. It has to have something to do, I imagine, with your own consciousness being right. split beyond the clones yeah, that you're creating, things, yeah. and then all these clones that you're then killing uh, after, you know, as you're splitting your consciousness, a lot of those clones die in the act of trying to solve a puzzle. Right. Sometimes 20 or 30 clones die just doing one puzzle. It's, it's very bizarre. Um, so it kind of has this little prestige slash moon thing going on where it's like, okay, what does this mean? Like, because the clone isn't really the one that's dying, it's the original, typically, that's dying. The clone is the one that usually lives on, so you're killing your original self and your clone is living on, and it's like, okay, does this clone retain all of the memories and the consciousness and the personality of what came before it? Right. And it's, it's, it's like pretty cool. Prestige. Very much like Prestige. Yeah, so uh, it's a really cool game. Cool. Uh, I think the other game that we both played, do we want to wait to talk about? Uh, yeah, only wait, because I yes. think everybody knows what we've been playing. Yeah, that, that was so. really cool, but we'll get to that a little later on uh, when we discuss it in the topic of... Not the topic of the week, but more so actually the level update. Kristen, what is going on with you? All right, that was just a joke. That she can actually talk. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't make noise. Go ahead. What is, what's going on with you? I like to pretend um, sometimes. I like to pre pretend that I am you. Right? This is the first time you've ever done that. No, I do that to you. Oh, you're right, you're right. You do it all the time. What I are you talking that, about? I do that to him to make him think that he's deaf. <laughs> um, and it never works. <laughs> and what else do I do this week? I like to pretend that when he falls asleep, it's Monday morning. Um, and I say, get up, get up, you're late for work. And he goes, nah. <laughs> Because uh -huh. she's kind of right in the sense that, like, you ever have that moment where you feel like you have to go to work and then you realize you don't have to, and it's it's really nice. Even worse was uh, when I when I was younger. I think we were in like sophomore year of high school or whatever. I used to go over like from Frank's house right down the street, yeah, and everything like that. Well, Frank the one day just wanted to go take a nap, and he does this all the time. So I was just chilling at his house, and you know, we were hanging out. And I was in the one room, and all of a sudden he wakes up maybe like an hour or two hours later, yeah, and he just like. What time is it? Oh shit! And he just runs upstairs. I'm the other. He doesn't see me. He's like running around or anything like that. He comes down, and his mom's like cooking it in the kitchen. She looks at him, and he just looks at her. He's like, "Mom, why are you making steaks for breakfast?" She's like, "What are you talking about?" He thought it was six thirty in the morning, not six thirty. I think night. everyone's had that. Yeah, at least once. It. It's yeah. the yeah. best feeling in the world. It is a good feeling yeah, when you realize you don't have to. Go to sometimes, like, I'll take a nap after work, and then I'll wake up and I'll be like, "Shit, like." What time is it? And then yeah. I'm going to be like, sweet. That's typically the way it works for me, too. It's usually like after I get home from work, I take a nap, and I, I wake up like at 9 or 10 o'clock at night, and right. that's my first thing. Especially in there, because we don't have any windows right. in our bedroom. Yeah, it's just completely it's dark. It's pitch black, so always it's pitch black, so it's always, I don't know until I can see a clock. But, Did you hear um, about the two guys that drank battery acid? What? They're about to be charged. Very nice. Is that from Left Behind? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, I think, that was our favorite one. I think we all decided on. Hey, firemen, how you doing? Welcome to the room. Welcome everybody to the room. We're just about to get into our level update, but real quickly, let me just say, we are the Level Up Show. We are a gaming dedicated talk show on every Sunday right now at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Tonight we have myself, Andrew, Mike, Anthony, and Kristen. We'll be with you for the next two to two and a half hours. If you enjoy our show at any point. 
Please look on the TV below uh, for all of our different channels, twitch.tv slash The Level Up Show. Heart us on there. You'll get email notifications whenever our show goes live. Uh, on Twitter, we're at The Level Up Show, level spelled LVL. We're very active on Twitter and Facebook, so please follow and like. Uh, TheLevelUpShow.com is our official website with articles, editorials, reviews, and more. Very cool site. Check that out. We have big plans for it in the future, too, because of DJ Westfire. Yes. Getting very close to finishing his application in the near future, guys. For you, to, for beta members at first to check out, and then it'll become uh, more wide for you guys. Uh, and then YouTube.com is what we're really pushing right now. It's YouTube.com slash The Level Up Show, level spelled LVL. Uh, we put all of our archived episodes on there, um, including our Let's Plays. Yes. All that kind of stuff goes on YouTube and is even divided up into shorter segments for you guys to And pay attention because there's going to be more coming. But yes, there's definitely going to be more coming. Um, and finally, I am Andrew, Drew M1788, and Mike is the new guru. All right, you guys ready to start the level update? Go ready for it. Let me just say that this didn't flag, and also, more surprisingly, the Sims 4 thing didn't flag. Which I was really, really? surprised about. Maybe it was a lie. No, it's not a lie. There's no, plenty there's of things getting muted. Tons of people getting. Do you really think maybe like the playroom music overlapping with the other music makes it so we don't get recognized? Are we immune? Are we immune to the to the audio? Because when you think about it, there's no one else that's actually allowed to really do this. What we're doing on the Twitch. And that was such a blatant like commercial right. song, like very right. active right now on radios and stuff like that. Uh, so I was really surprised that our Sims 4 we segment should, We should really test tight. it out. We should just do a couple streams where we just literally play a song. And yeah. Just, and just see what And happens. see if we're immune. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start off. We're like Ellie the... of Twitch. Yeah, definitely. We're, the, we're <laughs> immune to the virus. Um, recently, we talked about uh, Square Enix working with a developer called Don't Nod. Yes. And they're the ones that did Remember Me. Not a stellar game by any means, but uh, there's a few people that enjoyed it. No, and it was definitely misunderstood. It definitely was a really good game. It's on PlayStation Plus, or was at some point, yes. and I know uh, Greg thought it was pretty good. And uh, I know it has a very strong female character that people attached with. Uh, but we knew that they were working on a game, and now we know what it is. It's called Life is Strange. As I said, it's developed by both Don't Nod and Square Enix, mm -hmm. and it will star teenage girls by the names of Max and Chloe. Uh, I have a feeling that this is to kind of go with the trend right now of these really strong feminine characters like Ellie, mm -hmm. like the girls from uh, from uh, Gone Home. It, yeah. This is kind of a little bit of a trend right now. But I hear what's cool about this from people that were at Gamescom is they're not at all flaunting it. Like, you don't get into it, and they're not like, we're cool, we're cool, look, we have like these strong female characters. It just kind of is there. You know, it's like these are just, this is just a story about two girls and it's well told, well acted, you know, and that's it. Don't, like, don't look into it any more than that. <laughs> um, but it will be an episodic adventure, which I think is pretty cool, where the two ex friends come back together to investigate the dis disappearance of a third friend named Rachel. Now, I think Max kind of left Chloe, like abandoned her after something happened traumatic in their lives, so they don't have a very good friendship anymore. That's why I'm saying ex friends. The twist, though, is that the ex friend Maddie, or not Maddie, uh, Max, has the ability to rewind time. Okay. Um, and it's used very subtly in the playthrough that is at Gamescom, where she kind of just says, I wish I could take this back, and it happens. So I don't know if she realizes she has this ability, or if it's something that comes like right in the so start of the game. is it a mechanic, or is it part of the story? It's a mechanic, as far as I know. But, uh, you know, I haven't seen any actual playthroughs just yet on the game. Welcome, Hood, uh, Platinum, Tri-Ace. Thank you guys <clears> for coming in here. We're in our first level update. Finally, uh, there is no release date for the first episode yet, but what I think is pretty cool and something that I think The Walking Dead gets wrong is they right. already said that there will be no more than one month between each mm -hmm. episode. Right, which is what everybody's complaining with The Last of Us. Uh, the with walk, 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 sorry, Walking Dead. You know, if The Walking Dead, it doesn't have to be a month, but they need to kind of give a little bit of an inkling as to how long we need to wait. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to finish the episode and be like, I don't know if I have to wait two months, three months, six right. months. Like, if you just, just tell me, know. look forward to it in the next two months or less, then I'd be like, okay, you know, I, I know when it's coming, that I don't have to, like, question right. and expect it or right. anything like that. So I'm glad that they're saying right off the bat with an episodic series that you can look forward to it, like, every month. Yeah. Oh, very cool. That's good. Um, now, this is something that's cool to me, because I'm not, I haven't been a big um, fan of Mortal Kombat in recent years, and I used to, like, growing up, I used to love it, but they revealed Kano from Mortal Kombat 10, and he was actually one of the characters I yeah. hated. Long time veteran, though. Right, he was always in it, but he was always boring. I never really cared about him. But they showed him off, and he is badass again. Um, he's a lot older in this one. He has more of a cybernetic, bionic, you know, um, 
look to him, and he has more powers that revolve around that. Um, and just like with everybody else in Mortal Kombat 10, he's going to have three different fighting styles. Uh, the first one is Cutthroat. Um, it's going to really more so be uh, a melee type combat, so an up-close combat. Um, so it's gonna he's going to basically pound on his heart. He has this little circular light show thing. Yeah, his arc reactor, you mean? It sounds like they touch light. You remember what I'm talking about? It reminds me of an arc reactor. The arc reactor, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, he pounds on it to gain power and everything like that. And, you know, he has, like, big combo knife attacks and everything. So that's pretty cool. I'm sorry? They probably um, aren't. Yeah. But then uh, there's cybernetic moon, uh, which is going to be more of, like, a ranged moon. So he's going to use his eye for laser attacks and throw grenades and stuff like that. Um, so he's going to be able to de- you know, defend himself against aerial attacks. Yeah. And finally, he's going to be the commando, and it's going to be more about grappling. You know, He's going to throw people a lot, use all that. Um, he's going to be very, very strong. He looks like he's out of the WWE when he's in commando. Oh, mode. 100%. Yeah, he's like spearing and stuff like that, like Goldberg. Right. And I'll tell you right now, that the, the, have you, did you see the um, fatality that he used? I only saw the glimpse of... Uh, go ahead. Uh, maybe I'm it's thinking of a different one. pretty badass. He like grab, he like fights her, and he, you know, when he, he's fighting the uh, the bug princess queen. Yeah. Whatever, and it, at the end, he grabs her, and you just yeah. see her face. Hey, and he just lights up his like eye and just like shoots his laser right through her skull. Yeah. And, like so first. intense, and I was like, yes, yeah. this is going back to like classic style. Just yeah. So you guys know. Greg is in here, and also wow. Kristen, check out the number. Thank you guys, we're at 120, that is awesome. We jumped up real quick there. Also a big welcome to Greg Verga, who's in the room. Uh, we've got, who else do we got in here right now? Anybody uh, from that is like a routine like a routine viewer? Oh, we got Dave in here, anything like that? We've got uh, Puss in here, obviously. It didn't work. They just do ban. Who's trying to do? Because obviously the person's here to cause problems. Um, welcome, Great. I can't say your name. Great Athedoke? Hadoken? Hadoken, the great Hadoken. Very cool. Alright, it worked. There you go. And Bray Sin's in here. Welcome in Bray Sin. Welcome Lionhammer. We got a lot of people coming in like 20 minutes late. You guys busy this evening? You can't do that on the iPad, unfortunately. Uh, Let's move on to our third story. Kristen, this is yours. Wow, you all suck. All blue. Kojima and Del Toro are working together on Silent Hill. Real quick! Morning. I just want to. This is the, There's that, a lot of point of that there, guys. If you have not played something called PT, if you don't know anything about PT, this is a spoiler alert for you right now. There's something special about it. We're going to be talking about it in 30 seconds. 30 We're, seconds. I was going to say 45. At least. <laughs> okay. Well, no, 15 <laughs> seconds makes a huge difference. It's us. So, hold on a sec, just before you read this, because this is a spoiler. It wasn't in blue. That's why I didn't read it. Yeah, but it's in big bold letters. But uh, real quickly, welcome and brief in. Welcome, hello. Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent. All right, 45 seconds, starting now. Kristen, go. Kojima and Hatoro are working together on Silent Hills. Metal Gear Solid director Hideo Kojima and Pain's Labyrinth director Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro are su- surprisingly working together on a new Silent Hill game starring The Walking Dead's Norman Reedus. In typical Kojima fashion, he fooled everyone by announcing the game secretly as a playable <clears throat> teaser called PT. It was made immediately free on the PlayStation Store following the announcement at Sony's Gamescom conference. Kojima tweeted out about the reveal saying, Originally we were thinking a game that would make you pee your pants. Now we are aiming for a game that will make you shit your pants. Yes! Yes! I could not read it. She never curses. So I wrote down the, the curse, and I was hoping that she would finally say it. Wow. She cursed. Wait, you don't curse? She does not curse. I have not ever realized wow, that before. Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> And that's she recorded. cursed. Oh, All right, <laughs> sorry guys, this is a big deal Three. for me. Broke her Kristen morally. does not curse, and I, I got was her. Ran, so I had to read it. I got her to curse. That awesome. But what's curse. cool about that is we both played it. We both recorded it. We streamed it. My cousin played it. We recorded it. Yes. It was actually really cool. Yeah, let's talk um, about PT a little bit. Guys, I love purpose? it. A little bit. Yeah, I kind of wanted to see if you would <laughs> say like S or star, 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 star or something. Doesn't matter, but I had a curse. So okay, okay. Anyway, uh, no, it, it, it was. I'll, I'll tell you right now. People that watch me uh, stream it, uh, I feel bad because my mic died. My mic wasn't working right. Yeah. I had. To, I didn't have it plugged in the right way, or something happened. But uh, I can't remember who it was that was in the room that said they could see. Uh, I think it was was it Crow or Racer. I think it was Racer X 
so that he could see like my reaction. Like I think my camera twitched a little bit yeah. at the first time I saw the thing because that scared the f- it out of me. Scared me as well. Uh, the beginning like forty five minutes were a lot scarier than everything that came after. Right, because you kind of knew what to expect. Except yeah. for the ending had a couple like here and there, but the thing is, uh, the beginning is much more horror. The last half is kind of more puzzle. Puzzle, and I yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah I, that's I enjoyed fine. that. Although I, I do think that it's a little bit too arbitrary. The last puzzle. A little too random. Especially oh, yeah. now that it seems to be coming out that it really is, I think, like a random algorithm. Yeah. Like, it doesn't seem to be any fine, like, solution right. to the puzzle. And it's the funny, end. speaking about that, Kojima said that he was expecting it to take, you know, up to weeks for us to figure out the puzzle. We yeah. figured it out in hours. Yeah, I mean, come on. Like, that's not going to happen. No, <laughs> yeah. Not anymore. People will eventually find out, even by accident, which is right. kind of what I did by accident. But I, I, the, the scares were excellent. The graphics were actually pretty damn good for just right. a little teaser. Especially because he said he, they dumbed it down. Yeah, they, they dumbed it down. For uh, you know, independent type game. So I'm really excited to see yeah, what it was. 7780s studio. Yeah, they tricked um, me, man, with that. This, so did you figure out all the bullets? The, the 248632? Yeah. What does that mean? Is that right. so, a zip code, right? Uh, well, 7780 is, is like thought of right now. The, the most, the biggest assumption, I guess, is two main zip codes. Yeah. Um, they start 7780 and then they have a couple of number, you know, whatever numbers, kind of like how ours are around here. Yeah. Um, so that's the most biggest assumption. Did you figure out the 204863? No. That is supposed to, supposedly um, Kojima's birthday. Oh, <laughs> Kojima, man. The guy um, thinks, I mean, I, I always think this is funny, but Kojima will often have in his games little, uh, like, little egotistical bit. things. Yeah. Like, did you, like, in one of the Metal Gears, it, at the very end of it, after the credits, it says God, and then it says Hideo Kojima. <laughs> he calls really? himself God That's awesome. in the credits. No, he, I, I enjoy it. It's actually pretty cool. The uh, 204863, um, I think it was, uh, what, August 24th, 1963 is his birthday. Okay. So... Yeah, the guy, uh, he does it as a joke more than anything else. Yeah, but, I, I uh, love it, though. The guy is, come on, I mean, you got to give him credit. The guy's a genius. When have we ever su- seen anybody do this before? This is the the best way I've ever seen for somebody right. to announce a game. Especially because he wanted everybody to stream. There's actually a thing, and it, it, it is it does have a little bit to do with your microphone. He wanted everybody to have the microphone plugged in. Yeah, something's think, going on there. I think it was something like if you were talking during the one part, it didn't happen, or something that actually had something to do with that. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I I mean, people bit. kept shouting at me when I was playing it. If you guys want to check out my three hour playthrough, it was so easy. entertaining just to see your sheer there, frustration. There's two parts up on YouTube, it's, I think it's hilarious. But we went through so many different variations in that final puzzle. Puzzle Like, oh, go to the baby. When you see her in the mirror, shout, hello, Lisa. Like, I'm shouting at the screen, hello, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. You're breaking my heart. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, I'm trying so hard to get the thing to happen. Um, and if you want to see my method for finishing the final puzzle, I'm not saying it's going to be the same for you, but if you would like to see the way I finish the final puzzle, it's all in the YouTube video. Again, our YouTube is right there on the screen, youtube.com slash the level up show level spelled LVL. That it, it's, it was really cool. It was very entertaining for both of us. Yeah. And uh, final story in that was this only segment. 45 seconds. Yeah, it was, but we didn't, <laughs> we didn't say at all what PT is. No. Um, and, except for the one part where Kristen said it. So, PlayStation 4, during the conference, I figured we'd kind of get, like, the big news into our level update and talk games later, but I think the big, one of the biggest things that we heard at PlayStation's conference is that they have sold 10 million units through to consumers. Not even sold to retailers. retailers, not just sitting on the shelves. No. To consumers, 10 million units. I think they just passed it. Like, that week, they had just passed it. It worked out perfectly for them. But this puts the PS4 in first place as the best-selling console. I didn't really fastest think selling, I should say. The fastest selling console of all time. This I, part is really ironic. I didn't know this. I really wanted to, to put this in here. It's very ironic that Now we're not fanboys. It's just ironic. It's ironic. Don Matrick, who's no longer with Microsoft, but last generation, he was the one to say, history shows us that the first company to reach 10 million in console sales wins the generation battle. So Don Matrick thinks that Sony has won. Um, and it, it's also, on top of that, it's now possible that with these recent numbers coming out, PS4 might be selling over 2 to 1 on Xbox worldwide. Right. Whereas in the US, we know, we're pretty sure it's actually a bigger jump than that. Maybe. Our worldwide. most recent numbers for Microsoft right. are like 5.2 million sold to retailers. Right. And I'm sure they're above that now, but since it was sold to retailers, we have no idea how much yeah, it's on shelf. How many actually. So it might be around 2 to 1. Right. And finally, I just... Out of curiosity, I was just kind of thinking, with these numbers coming out of Sony's conference, do you think Square Enix feels a little bit of sadness for their recent exclusivity deal, which we'll get to later? 
No, because they got money in the pocket. They do. That's what we'll, we'll talk about that later. But I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think that they, they got paid, they got their money, so they're happy. But guys, we are going to turn on the Skype lines right now. Antoine over here will post in the chat room our Skype ID um, for you guys. Yeah, exclamation point Skype. So guys, it's online. All you gotta do is call into the Level Up Show, spelled exactly how it sounds on Skype. You'll see it right there. Let's see? And we are now online. So please call in. We can talk about any of the big news stories from this week. We got a lot to discuss. Boosh! Boosh is right. Boosh! Is if you want 10 million boosh. 10 million boosh. Oops. Uh, if you want to jump ahead and we can talk about Gamescom, that's fine. You know, we'll be talking about Gamescom a lot tonight. Guess who's joining us? Batgirl has joined the show. How much are y'all getting paid for this? Not enough. Not enough. Yeah, not nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. We're not getting paid anything. Although, if you guys really do enjoy the stream, you're, you're, you're free to donate to us in any way. Thank you, Zaker. Zaker4, thank you for your friend request. If you guys would like to help us out with the show and help it improve in the future, we do have a website on the TV here. It's called streamtip.com slash T slash The Level Up Show. If anybody does want to, you know, help us out, just go there. You can donate whatever you see fitting, and obviously you're That's not obligated to do that. We get paid in viewer love. Yeah, exactly. We, we love our viewers. And, uh, and that's all we need, really. We do this for you guys. We do it for our love of the industry. It's a lot of fun for us. Yes. Lion Hammer wants to know where Mark is. He's busy. Boosh. Um, he's got... Stuff. Professional be. reasons not to be here. Yes. <laughs> Let's go with that. Professional reasons. Um, career reasons. So, oh, uh, come on. He's just busy. Um, but Brother Anthony's in here filling in. He's sleeping with the fishes, says Anthony. <laughs> really, dude? <laughs> that's terrible. Um, DJ and me said something, says Greg. What did he say? DJ and who? Greg Verga said something about DJ. DJ Westfire Diary Jason. DJ and me and you give enough of that. Oh, yeah. Got a lot of love from those guys. Mark just landed a role in the TMNT sequel. Yeah, I don't think that's happening. He's going to be, uh, oh, what was the guy's name that always wore the hockey mask? He's a performing well? Um, no. Like, it was number box. one. It was, it was number good. one in the box office. Beat Guardians and Guardians second week. TMNT beat them, which a lot of people didn't think would happen. So I think it's doing better than a lot of people were expecting. I mean, for sure. I mean, what did you expect? It's a freaking Eternals movie. Princess Monica says, "Are you guys excited for Super Smash 6? None yes. of us has Nintendo console, I, and we do. I, I want to get it though. Yeah, but it also comes with 3DS. Let's right. not forget that. Right. Um, <laughs> not as extensive. Casey Jones, thank you so much. Yeah, Casey Watch Jones. Watch to be Casey Jones in the next Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Movie. Something's going wrong with the stream right now. Uh, guys, refresh if you are still in here. It seems like something might be going wrong with the stream. Fire. We're like bottoming out." Batman vs. Superman, your thoughts? Uh, all we got to go off is is that little teaser that got leaked, but it was very exciting, and man, uh, God, the the audience alone got me hyped up when they showed that, that off. God, it was just, there was, the excitement in the room was just insane. I thought it was pretty cool. I don't know, it sounds, it sounds really bloated to me. It does sound bloated, yeah. But it doesn't mean it won't be fun to see. Right. Like, even if the movie isn't that great, I'm excited to see it just for Batman vs. Superman. I'm so disappointed that we haven't seen this movie yet because everything's being spoiled now. Like, Baby Groot and Howard the Duck. All the stuff yeah. is being spoiled now. It's really getting on my nerves. We need yeah. to see this movie now. We do need to see that movie. I heard it's really good. Well, we were going to go. Yeah. We wanted to go. Just been like, Baby Groot's all over the internet, and it looks <laughs> hilarious. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> He's so sad. <laughs> Baby Groot. Uh. It's like, I wanted to see that, like... Uh, your chat screen could be broken. You, we can see what you guys are saying, so I don't yeah, know. I can see it fine. You guys are chatting, and we can see what you guys are saying. Everything's working for us. Uh, okay, three biggest reveals from Gamescom. I think we'll save that for a little later on, guys. Yeah, we're we have a, a big one. Big Gamescom yeah. discussion, but I think we're going to shut off Skype for now. No one called in, but... We're going to be opening up the lines again later, guys, so make sure when we open up the lines that you guys call in with our uh, Skype ID. We're going to move on to segment two. What was that? Okay. If you need to leave, you can. All right, so you actually start off this segment, Mike. Oh, One second. Uh, all right, so Metal Gear Solid 5 will come to the PC through Steam. Oh, that's good, so it doesn't have to worry, no one has to worry about Origin. No. <laughs> um, in another funny Kojima-style announcement, it was revealed that both Ground Zeroes and The Phantom Pain will make it to PC through Steam. The reveal came through a video at the Keeley-hosted MGS conference after showing off the cardboard box gameplay, which was so awesome. Yeah. That was one of my favorite parts of the entire conference, I know yours too. 
Um, they said there was one more announcement related to the box. The video get began with Snake utilizing the stealth tactic with a valve attached to the back of the box. As the camera pans, it was revealed that Steam is written on one side of the box, and as the valve turns, pressured Steam starts shooting out from under the box. Did you see this? No. I need to watch Just this. a nice, fun little way to announce uh, another version. I think a lot of people were hoping for a PC version of Metal Gear Solid because the Fox engine... Uh, works on PC, works on everything. It's a very diverse uh, engine, so a lot of people are very happy that they'll finally be getting Metal Gear Solid on the PC. Right. Um, I think they, they every, it's so that's awesome. Great for those PC guys that don't want to get it on console. Uh, I will be getting it on console. I'll be right. getting it on PS4 for sure. Kristen, you are up with the next announcement. Can you read it? Okay. Uh, Kristen is not feeling well, so I will read. Uh, Blizzard is planning. I'm like, I'm gonna like pass out. Why don't you take off the very hot Batman? Giant. What? The heck? She's like having a, a breakdown over there. All right, let's get to this. Uh, Blizzard is planning a memorial for the Robin Williams uh, within. All right. Blizzard is planning a memorial for Robin Williams within World of Warcraft. Obviously, with the unfortunate death of Robin yes. Williams this past week, a petition uh, and it originated online at change.org. Right. Uh, and it requested that the Academy Award winning actor and comedian uh, be memorialized in one of his favorite games, World of Warcraft. The petition states he often joked about the WoW addiction, but also about the reactions he'd get from other gamers when he admits he plays the game. Because of his presence within our community, Within our community, we, the players of World of Warcraft, are asking Blizzard to kindly create an NPC within the game that memorializes the active comedian. Thank you for the friend request. Um, the technical game designer on WoW, Chad Nervig, uh, he responded very quickly saying, yes, we're taking care of him. Uh, the idea is that the NPC will perform many of William's more memorable jokes so that he can be uh, memorialized and keep WoW players smiling long after his departure. Uh, and also, since that WoW petition, another has surfaced online asking for Williams to be remembered in the next Legend of Zelda and as Nintendo well. And Nintendo only has said so far, uh, we get their, I think they basically said something along the lines of, we understand the question, you yeah. know, and or something like that, but we have nothing to officially announce at this time. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's a simple thing. All they gotta do is name someone named Robin. Mm -hmm. Just put something right. Robin in there. I, I honestly feel like in the next Zelda, just because of the type of humor that they have in the game already, yeah. you'll see a character that's just named Robin, and he just says, like, some really goofy quotes yeah, from, like, some of the... That's all he's gotta know, do. Some of the best, like, little goofy quotes. Maybe there's a genie of some kind. Yeah, maybe there's a genie, yeah. like, you know, now go and be free, like, I can't, or Coffee yeah. Diem, or something like that, you know, something where... What is, what is everybody's favorite Robin Williams movie? Yeah, definitely. Guys, throughout the chat room, you can do it all show if you want, but uh, what's your your favorite, favorite memory? Yeah, type of thing. What's your favorite Robin Williams show, movie, movie whatever? Comedy Anything. show, he's done comedy shows. Yeah. He's, done, he, he's just, his career was so diverse. He, had, he did so many amazing I, uh, things. I'd probably great. say Good Will Hunting. Yeah. Me. That's one of his best. That's his one, I think, Academy Award that he got. He may have gotten one other one, maybe for Good Morning Vietnam or something like that. But I do know that he won for Good Will Hunting, and he was excellent. They added, they added Hook to Netflix, like the yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I was watching a bit of that. Not like corny movie in ways, yeah, but still it's not a really good movie. But it's a cool he's, Peter he's, Pan story. He's, yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah. Um, also, I think somebody said cool show. Thank you, man. Really glad you're enjoying the show. Um, Hook was awesome. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I actually almost went on a Robin Williams binge today because they have a bunch of uh, movies on Netflix mm -hmm. right on uh, most popular. You got right toys now. in there. Good Morning Vietnam. A lot of good ones in there. Uh, Firmware 2.0 was announced also at the PlayStation yes. conference uh, with some cool features uh, and also stuff not yet revealed. But they did say that it would be coming in the next couple of months. And the big thing is that we'll finally introduce the share play functionality, something that was shown off at the original February reveal event for PlayStation. Now, if you guys don't know what share play is, this was the idea that you would be able to give control of a game to another player across an online connection. It would pretty much stream the game to them, and then with their controller, they could control your game. Um, so it's almost like a local multiplayer without actually having the person on the couch next to you. They're calling it almost virtual couch play, yeah. in a way. And it's a really cool idea. There, there's going to be some kind of limitation on it, I'm sure, as far as how much time that person can play or something like that. I mean, they're not going to allow you to play a full game. 
Right. You know, I'm not going to be able to keep my PS4 on and say, hey, Mike, I bought this game. You can play the whole thing. Right. But that's not going to happen, guys. Don't expect that. That would be ridiculous. So please don't expect that. But it's it's still a cool feature, right? Don't you agree? I, I, I'm i really excited for this. Yeah. Um, especially because there's things like, look at Swapper. Yeah. I kind of want to get it, but I don't know if I would love it for the 20 bucks that it is. Yeah. With this, I can definitely check it out without leaving the house. Uh, Chuska says one hour time limit. That's the rumor right now. Now, does that mean one hour per day? Does that mean one hour at a time? We have no idea. Does that mean one hour per friend? It, it could be a lot of different things. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see, guys. One hour is currently the rumor we're hearing, though. Um, and then fi- on top of that, uh, YouTube share support will finally be yes. introduced. So we'll be able to Which export. Which makes sense with the Twitch. Yeah. You know, yeah, Google, Twitch, buyout thing going on. So we'll now be able to export instantly to uh, to YouTube using the share functionality. Now, there are unknown features, but one that we think we know about now because of the PlayStation Blogcast, the guys yes. on that uh, podcast who are from Sony, from PlayStation, said that themes would be introduced in uh, firmware Good night, 2.0, which cool. I know a lot of you guys have been requesting. So right. finally, we will be getting themes. What that means, we don't know yet. Probably wallpapers. I don't know if that means you'll be able to change icons, but I'm sure wallpapers at least, maybe some color changes. Right. I hope so. Yeah. Good news. Hopefully. Um, Bloodborne will be targeted at a wider audience. Uh oh. <laughs> That's what everybody said. That's what everybody's saying. <laughs> uh oh. I really agree because you know. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. Um, but they producer, said this about Dark Souls too. Let's put that out there. Right. Uh, <laughs> producer Masaki Yamagiwa. I think that's how you say. Yep. Yeah. Uh, said in an interview, in terms of who the game is aimed at. And we want to capture in terms of audience. Obviously, we can't betray or disappoint the fans out there. They're very, very important. They'll be a, the main ambassadors of the game. However, he did go on to say, we do want more people to share in this experience. Bloodborne's new online concept and experience will capture a wider audience. You died a lot in previous games, and you had to persevere. But one of our main goals with this game is that we don't want to focus on punishing the player. We want to deliver the game that gamers love. If the gamers like it... If the gamer likes the game, they'll definitely like it enough to have a bit more perseverance, but the way in which that they're making the game, the sense of punishment is, is much less. This is, of course, worrying to some Demon and Dark Souls fans because of how brutal the game was, and that's really the main core of it. Uh, that, that's the discussion that's going on, is what is the core of Dark and Demon Souls? A lot of people are saying, are, are saying, uh-oh, and then a lot of hardcore fans are coming to the defense saying, hey guys, like this isn't what makes Dark and Demon Souls so great. Right. Like, it's not just the punishment and, like, the sense of difficulty. There's a lot more to this game than that. And also, on top of that, it didn't take long after this story came out for them to immediately respond to the negativity, saying, oh, guys, don't worry, don't worry. It's still, right. it's still, you know, we know what you guys want. We know that the difficulty is a part of it. Like, it'll be there. I just have a feeling this probably means that they'll have a, a few different options on how to play. Maybe difficulty levels. Difficulty levels. I mean, they introduced bonfires and Dark Souls and everyone flipped their shit when that was announced, saying that it was going to make the game too easy. No, everyone still loves Dark Souls. It still retains the punishment, the extreme difficulty. So I think we just need to wait, guys. Trust in Miyazaki. Um, I, I think the guy has proven that he knows what you guys want, his fans of this genre. So uh, I think everything's going to be all Do well and good. Do you know what uh, Push Square is? Push Square. Not in 2.0, Push Square said it was a rumor. Uh, I've never heard of that site, actually, so I don't know if I would trust it, but uh, it's possible. I, I don't right. know. This is just from the PlayStation Blogcast. I mean, these guys are with PlayStation. These guys have insider information. Right. I don't know if it was something that they didn't mean to say, if it kind of just kind of leaked out of their mouths. But they did say on the most recent PlayStation uh, Blogcast that themes would be introduced in 2.0. We're going to turn on Skype now, guys. So yes, I can't see. I can't remember who it was. I wanted to know if you call in. You are welcome to call in. Whoever Prometheus. wants to. Yeah, Prometheus wanted King to call in. Prometheus. So cool. Brother Anthony just posted in the chat room. It's the Level Up Show, spelled exactly how it sounds. That is our Skype ID. So please call in. We can talk about Gamescom or any other big news you guys want to talk about. We'd love to chat. We haven't had any calls just yet. We can even talk about the Okama Game Sphere. Okama Game Sphere. I have the power! Where did that come from? Uh, they realized you can control Moobot. Oh, <laughs> or to certain people to control Moobot. There we go. Look, it looks like we're doing it through the... I don't mind that, actually. Ethan Ethan Yep. Oh, it's connecting. Hold on one sec, guys. Come on now, you can do it. Come on now, people now, people now. Come on now. 
Come on now. Well then. Ethan R, we are waiting to connect with you. It did not work. That's weird. I'm going to try calling him back. Okay. See if we can get him. Any info on Minecraft PS4? Um, it's coming out in the next couple of months. Yeah. Uh, was it November? I, I can't remember. I, I want to say November as well, so. Yeah. Um, Destiny Overrated? Uh, not in my opinion. Uh, not in my opinion either, according to the beta. Ram Bam, what's going on, bud? Uh, okay. Ethan, if you would like to call back, please do. Uh, we will be happy to take your call if you would call back. Um, let's see, what else we got going on here? PS4 needs video chat through the camera, yes. I agree, that would be really cool to add that. Hopefully they add Skype, that would be really cool. Uh, I know Microsoft owns Skype, but Skype is on the Vita, so I don't think there's any reason that they couldn't add it to the PS4 as well. Once again, guys, uh, the Skype ID is in the chat room. It is the Level Up Show, spelled exactly how it sounds, so please call in. What is Mike's real name? That is still an ongoing mystery. I think it's Lucas. 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 Someone already guessed that in the chat. I would have told you. If it was. Kevin. Someone else said Kevin again. I said I won't tell you if you're wrong. I'll tell you if you're wrong. Do, do, do we know what it starts with? No. No. All we know is that it's somehow related to Martin Lawrence. Here we go, Derek. Derek. <laughs> Boosh. 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 Derek. Right. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Yourself? Doing great. Thanks Wait. for that. Look at this picture. Honk if you support Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it today. That's an awesome thing. All right. Uh, yeah, during the uh, stream earlier, Mike was streaming The Last of Us Left Behind, and you. What, what did you think that? Why did you think he was Canadian again? Because he was not picking up at all on sarcasm. Oh, okay. I, I was not up with sarcasm. <laughs> and in Thirty Rock, they made a big joke that people from Canada do not know what sarcasm is. So I immediately asked him, like, are you from Canada by chance? And he said yes. <laughs> so I think that's really funny that, that that turned out to be true. But I doubt that's a stereotype that's actually real. <laughs> Don't worry on. about it. What's going on, Derek? Okay, so during Gamescom, I'm kind of wondering why Sony didn't pull the, the trigger on the Minecraft Vita bundle. I know, right? Right? <sighs> Huge mistake, in my opinion. Huge mistake. Pretty woman at reference right there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they didn't mention Vita any way, shape, or form. They actually removed a PlayStation Vita exclusive by making Tearaway go to PS4. So there is there was no news about Vita at all. Um, that would have been the obvious, right? And my, Minecraft would do, I think, very well on the Vita. Um, and it's something that people have been waiting for for a long time, especially if it was the full-fledged version right. of Minecraft. Um, it crossed by to PS4, PS3, Vita, but include it with the Vita with a price drop. They they might have given up. I, I don't know. Maybe they gave up on Vita. I, I really don't know. I yeah, that kind of does make me disappointed, especially as a proud Vita owner. I know it's a it's a wonderfully made system. Anybody who has a Vita currently, I know, is a huge supporter yeah. and is in love with the Vita. That's why the attach rate is so high on Vita. I mean, the people that have Vita really support it. They buy a lot of games, and that's kind of why I think it's working well for Sony, actually, um, that the people that do have it, they're buying a lot of games, they're making money off software. I don't think the system is that profitable, if profitable at all, from a hardware perspective. So, in a way, maybe they don't want to sell Vitas right now. <laughs> maybe they're like, okay, let's wait until we can make a profit on Vita as well software is selling really well even with the amount that we have you know in the channels in people's hands so maybe we wait until production value comes down we start selling it you know at a little bit of a discount but still make a profit off it maybe they're just waiting for that moment to come because even when borderlands 2 was doing really well in vita they didn't flood the channels no. they actually let them sell out they they were off the shelf and people couldn't find them. It's like Sony, what are you doing here? Like something is finally selling the Vita and you're not you're not supporting it. What's going on? So there there might be something to this, Derek, that we don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what, I just hope that Vita has another future. I know. I, I the thing is, I don't know if cons or not console, but handheld gaming really has a future yeah. outside of Nintendo. <laughs> it's it, like it is pretty crazy to think that handheld gaming has kind of just died. Like, oh, only really for Sony, uh, and in America more so than Japan. I mean, in Japan, the Vita's doing decent, and the 3DS is selling bonkers. So, um, I mean, that's always the way it is in Japan, though. Japan actually is kind of anti-console and more handheld. They're on, the, they're on the trains a lot and stuff like that, so they enjoy handheld gaming. 
And I know, like, in the industry, journalists and stuff love the Vita. People from IGN, Greg Miller and stuff like that, it's their favorite system because they're always on the road. They're on airplanes all the time. It's their one way to play console ver- versions of games on the road. And uh, so they love it. It's just, it's a shame that the uh, the rest of the world is not really picking up on it. Yeah, and soon we'll be all at the Vita's funeral. <laughs> yeah, I know. What are you going to wear? Uh, <laughs> I get one. Um, I think I'm gonna wear my. Uh, um, I'm gonna wear my baseball hat. <laughs> Go Blue Jays. Go Blue Jays. And, uh, I'm just gonna wear some formal attire. What about you? I'll wear a shirt saying "Blame Canada." <laughs> just for you, man. Or my birthday uh, suit. I only grew up there. I only grew up there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. But thanks for the call. We're all sad. All right. All right. See you later, man. Right. See you around, dude. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to shut off the lines for now. Thank you, Derek, once awesome. again for an awesome call. Always appreciate it. You forgot to shut, off. You forgot to shut me off. Oh, God. He's still You're there. Worst. Why aren't you going away, Derek? <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, you're gone now. Bye. Oh, you are the worst. I'm the worst. All right. Uh, we shut off the lines for now, guys. But if you would like to call in a little later, please do. We're going to do our last news segment for this week. Starting off with Kristen's story, but she's not feeling well, guys. Wish, uh, ooh, we got another call. What is it? Yeah, let's try Ethan. Let's take it. You're going to read blue. That's a weird name. <laughs> Come on, Ethan. Come on through. He's not going to connect. Nope. Ethan, for some reason, you must not have a good connection or something. Something's going on. Something's going on, I think, on your end. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. There, Ethan, are you there? Hello. Hey, how you doing, Ethan? Good. Doing good? Uh, we do not take video. Why is it showing? I clicked voice. Why are your video showing? Uh-huh. All right. Anyway, All right. anyway, Ethan, what's going on? Oh my god, we got a very creepy video going on here. Hi. Hey, how's it going, Ethan and friend? How you guys doing? Good, good. Uh, what do you want to talk about this week? PT. PT. Uh, did you play PT? Yes. All right, so what did you think of it? Did you, a uh, spoiler alert, guys, we're talking about PT, once again, spoiler alert. Did you know the secret behind PT when you played it? <laughs> Yes. Okay. I thought it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, now, have you played Silent Hill, Silent Hills at all before this PC? Uh, I played the first one. Very cool. Uh, now, I mean, how old are you, man? Thirteen. Thirteen. So a little young to be playing uh, such a horror game. I mean, this no, is, I wouldn't be that, but he probably doesn't even remember. Uh, the, I thought uh, it was terrifying. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I yelled. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I, I was yelled. freaking scared. What did you think, Ethan? I think this is Ethan, right? Yeah. Yeah, what did you think? Did you think it was scary or did it kind of just go over your head? <laughs> it was scary. Yeah. Yeah. Then do you remember the original really one? Scary. Do you remember the original Silent Hill? Uh, a little bit. A little bit? I remember when that first came out. I was probably right. No, I was probably actually a little bit younger than him. Yeah. When the first came out. Did you play the first one? Yeah. Uh, I played two. I never played At the first one. At the time, one. that was like the scariest thing in the world. I only played it for maybe an hour and a half, two hours. I'm like, I'm bringing this back to Blockbuster. I find that. You know what a Blockbuster is? <laughs> I bring it back to Blockbuster. And. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always find that Silent Hill. I'm oh, sorry. What do you say, Ethan? I almost peed my pants. That, that's the goal. <laughs> that was the intention that they had behind it, so... They're actually hoping that you shit your pants when the full game releases, so we'll see what happens for that. <laughs> you but, can't say that to him. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm cussing. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Ethan, anything else you want to say no. real quick? Uh, no, I just thought the game was awesome. Yeah, what about your friend here? What's going on with you, man? Sup, bro? <laughs> How you doing? You guys need to keep your your camera steady, man. There you go. I feel like you guys are filming like a. I really like the fact that Norman Norman Reedus was at the end of PT. Okay. That was funny. That's I'm really cool. Really happy that he actually knows the name Norman Reedus. Yeah. Just call him Daryl. Daryl. I called him Daryl because that's the first thing I connected with. But do you guys watch <laughs> The Walking Dead? Yeah, yeah, we watch it. Very nice. Yeah, I mean, that's exciting. I mean, I don't know if you guys know who, like, Guillermo del Toro is, but he is 
an amazing, no. amazing director, especially when it comes to the horror genre, and especially when it comes to creature effects and stuff like that. So this game is in really good hands when it comes to uh, to Hideo Kojima yeah. and Guillermo del Toro. And like you said, like, to have, too good to be true. Too good to be true, almost exactly. But to creature, have creature design is going to be fantastic. Oh, yeah, exactly. exactly. But to have Norman Reedus on top of it all as the main character is really, really exciting. So I agree with you guys. This, I think this game could be awesome. I have no idea when it's going to come out, but hopefully we get more information on it. Guys, thanks for calling in. You guys are cool. Okay, bye. Okay, guys. See you guys. Bye. <laughs> That's cool. We've never had such young callers before. No. All right, so if Cloverfield or any movie that's similarly filmed needs a cameraman, <laughs> We need to call them up. <laughs> Be like, yo, we know these two guys. They're perfect at it. They don't know how to keep the camera straight. And they'll be, they'll do, you, they'll do yeah, No, we, we, we appreciate you guys calling. No, I do. Really cool. <laughs> no, uh, Westfire says, is this the Blair Witch Project? Right, that's what everybody, that's what everybody yeah. says. So. No, we really appreciate that. It's really nice to finally talk with you, Ethan. Um, okay, yeah, Anthony, go ahead. Read uh, Christmas stories in the blue. All right. PS4 games were cut from Gamescom for Tokyo Game Show. Right, which is very reassuring, too, just to put that out there. It's very reassuring because there were still some things that we, 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 the both of us were like, where the hell is, you know, X or whatever, yeah. so. Although Sony had a stellar Gamescom conference, it left many gamers wondering what Sony's first-party studios are doing. Not one AAA first-party exclusive was announced for PS4, unless you include Tearaway Unfolding. However, Shuhai Yoshida might have given us an answer. In an interview with Famitsu, he had this to say, In selecting the games we wanted to introduce, we realized it wasn't possible to fit everything into the frame of the conference. So unfortunately, there were some games we couldn't introduce this time. Go ahead. No, you can read the last part, too. Go ahead. Yoshida even went on to directly blame the inclusion of the New Order 1886 and Bloodborne trailers as reasons for the removal of two big game reveals. Yeah, that's about six or seven minutes right there of trailers that uh, that they decided to include, and it's kind of funny. I guess they, they decided that they wanted to include those new trailers rather than show off new right, games. Right, because I feel like, I mean, Europe is going to... That's what has me wondering if we're finally going to hear the game. I don't even want to say it. Don't say the word. I feel like the more we say it, the more uh, okay, yeah. real it becomes. Yes. So from here on out, we are not. There is a certain game that we've been waiting to come to yeah. fruition for Clap years. Clap your hands. All right. Clap your hands if you want it to come back to life. We are not allowed to say the name of it anymore. It's kind yeah. of like Beetlejuice. We said it too much, and it just all of a sudden disappears. Wieners for you. No, I have a feeling that's because <laughs> Mark's not here. Right. Wieners loves Mark. Um, yeah, sorry guys that it, we're hoping Mark would be here. He's busy tonight, but we do have brother Anthony and, uh, filling in for Mark. He's week. never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> never! Um, but I'm hoping to see at least that. Yeah, I, a games, maybe, our Tokyo yeah. Game Show could be a yeah, pretty so. big show. If, I don't know if it's going to be big, but I think it's going to be a very, like, bam, we got it. Well, the thing is, Japanese, like, studios aren't really letting us know anything about what they're working on. That's the other thing. When are we going to get a good RPG? Yeah, exactly. I would love to see it uh, besides Final Fantasy XV and Kingdom Hearts 3. Right. I would love to see some more Japanese RPGs um, and anything else from Japan Studio, stuff like that. So right. I'm really excited for Tokyo Game Show, not just because of unnamed game we will never name again, but uh, <laughs> because of all the other stuff that could be com coming out of Japan that right. I, as like a, somebody that loves Japanese gaming, would love to see. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. Do you think you can sit? I'm to. Okay, Kristen will be back, guys. Don't you worry. Ian77, <laughs> Kristen's going to come back. She wasn't feeling well, but I think she might be feeling a little bit better now. Um, okay, moving on from that, guys, our favorite time of the month. Oh, uh, this is what everybody waits for Drew to do. July 2014, NPD report. Report, report, report. Uh, All right. Yeah, I need you to get me those TPS reports. <laughs> yeah. uh, not very exciting at all this week because a certain somebody will not release their numbers. I wonder why. Uh, but we do know that uh, PS4 is the number one selling console of the month. Uh, PS4, PS3 combined sales were once again ahead of Xbox One 360, and PlayStation 4 accounted for over half of the total next generation software sales. Mm -hmm. Wii U would not release their numbers. Xbox One would not release their numbers. Last week, I'm surprised last month, Nintendo won't release their numbers. Yeah, and this is the problem with the way MPD works now is that we can't really get numbers unless they release it. It really sucks. It's so much worse than what it used to be. All we can know for sure is that Sony is selling the best still. It's been seven months in a row now of PS4 being the number one selling console, but we do know software um, as far as the list goes. 
I think this is kind of surprising. I knew it would do well, but The Last of Us Remastered is the number one game for July 2014. But and realistically, what else did it really go up against? Not too much, exactly. Right. That's, that's not too surprising. I think this is surprising too. Minecraft. How the hell is Minecraft number Still two? Do, like, oh my god. Don't you people already have this game? This is insane. It didn't even get announced for Vita or anything, and the game is selling still every single month in the NPD. It actually climbed. Last month it was like eight. Now it's number two again. This game has legs, like freaking. Who has really long legs? Me. Kristen. Kristen has really long legs. That has legs like Kristen. Really crazy. I'm Minecraft. All legs. legs for days. I'm legs all for legs. days. But congratulations <laughs> to Minecraft. That's really unbelievable. Just legs for days. Thank um, you. After that, uh, we've got in third, FIFA 14. After that, Watch Dogs. Mario Kart 8, still doing well for the Wii U. That's very uh, good news for the Wii U. Uh, Call of Duty Ghost. Uh, back on, it's still on the charts, and this time Xbox One was the best-selling uh, version. So good on Xbox One this month for that. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V, then uh, Sniper Elite 3 uh, made it onto the charts. That. Very good for that. NBA 2K14 and 9, and rounding out the top 10 is LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. Uh, always does well. Lego does yeah, very well. Does really well. Because it's on so many consoles. I mean, let's just say it. it's on 360, PS3, 3DS, DS, PS4, Wii U, Xbox One, right. Vita, and PC. So when you're on that many different uh, right. systems and consoles, you're always gonna do you have that. a chance of making the NPD. <laughs> I have to wonder, I can't remember the guy, I think his name's Adam something, but the guy that created Minecraft. Uh, yeah, I don't know his name. Can you imagine he's how much money be. he has? He's got to be rolling in it at this point. I have to imagine because well, he made the game himself, right? He's the only yeah, person. I think. I think it was. Oh, well, I think that he might have had like one other person. Okay. But like he, at this point, he might as well just like liquefy the money and bait him. Yeah. Like that's how much money he has. Yeah, it's unbelievable. The guy hit the jackpot on that. Uh, finally, no, not final. <sighs> not finally. One more after this. This is nuts, though. This is nuts, and it's, it's true. Crazy. I did the math. I know, I know. <laughs> okay. Wait, did you really like do like yeah. second it up? Yeah, I did the math. Yeah. Oh god, I, hate I actually got much. more than what they said, but I understand why they said. So, No Man's Sky, everybody. So, just a, a little preface. No Man's Sky, everybody's been wondering, you know, how big it actually is. Yeah. You know, how you know everybody they know it's procedurally generated and everything like that, but no one really believed that it was that big. Yeah. Apparently, and backed up by Drew Maduri of the Level Up Show. Yep, I know math. <laughs> I knows my math. I knows my math. No Man's Sky players will need at least five billion years to explore every single planet created in the game. Which is longer than the Earth will survive. Yes. According to scientists, it will be 4.5 4. 5 billion years until the Earth dies. They're probably from the sun exploding. So, we will not be on this Earth. When, but, uh, that's definitely a big benefit for replay value. Yes. Everybody bitches that games are too short. Well, damn. Here, here there you, you go. see your ancestors and their kids and then their kids or your ancestors. But, yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> in a talk with IGN, Sean Murray explained that even if the player visited each planet for only one second, it would still take five billion... Jesus, fuck. I know. <laughs> like, like, one second on each oh planet. Oh my god. Five billion Thank years. you for the friend request, DX Um So this made it possible... This was made possible because Hello Games utilized 64-bit numbers instead of the normal 32-bit. At 32-bit, it still would have taken hundreds of thousands of years, but by using 64-bit, that means there are two to the power of... 64 total values generated. Dividing that exponential value by the 31 million, million seconds in one year gives you the estimated 5 billion years to explore every planet. That's the math I did, because I was just wondering how I got this number. So what I did is I went, I, this is simple math. This is not crazy at all. Uh, it's just, I'm sure you guys know what an exponent is. It, 2 to the 60 more 4 means that you're multiplying 2 times itself 64 times. That totaled like 1.8 times 10 to the 19th. That's I don't even know what that is. That's like above trillion. I, I'm not sure what that value is. So then I was like, okay, he's figuring this out in seconds. So now I got to figure out how many seconds are in a year. I did the math. There's 31 million seconds in one year. So I took that value of two to the 64 divided by 31 million. Thank you, probably. And that is where you get the over five billion years. It's actually a good bit over five billion years. So it's it's true. He's actually really good at math. Um, so pretty much what's happening here is 2 to the 64 just means that that's all the different variations of planets that are possible. Right. If you have a 64-bit number. So, so you know what that means, guys. Thank, thank you for the friend request. Chris Carr and Primal Vision, I think. Like, yeah, Primal one. Vision, I think, was the other so, one. Thank you guys for the friend request. What that means is we need to make a coalition of No Man's Sky players yeah. and see how many planets we can all visit. We have to go try to go to different planets each. Yeah, that's foolhardy right there. So, never going to happen. <laughs> But good luck, guys. We're almost at 200, guys. If we get to 200, we'll do Pterodactyl Andrew. Yes. 250 will be Giraffe Kristen. And 300 will be Dino uh, Team this okay. week. Just because we have a lot of weeks, it seems. 
Uh, we don't have Mark this week, so no Mark's legs. Anthony. Yeah. Anthony, you want to do? We want to show off some legs at 300. Maybe? He's already showing off legs. All right, never mind. Yeah. Dino team at three at 300. All right. Yeah, I'm already the last story. Kristen, do you think you can read? You All good? right. She's feeling good enough to read now, guys. And she's also back in the chat room. Yeah. Planet level up. Um, there's someone new. Okay, we got a new guy in here. What's your name? Wes underscore the underscore Bills. Wes the Bills. Welcome to the Level Up Show. We are a gaming dedicated talk show. Happy to have you with us. Kristen is about to do the final story in our Level Up team. Um, Andrew is 6'1". I'm 6'1". So you really? Yeah. Greg is 6'4". Um, yeah, Greg's a freaking Greg taller. is so much taller than I ever Greg expected. Is right? so I did not expect him to be That just really took me tall. completely by surprise He's when I met him. He's so tall. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, Greg, I thought you were going to be like 5'7 or something. I expected shorter. I figured Sorry. he would be around almost your height. Yeah, I, I yeah, expected shorter. I was guessing 6 foot. I, was I just want to climb up on his shoulders and ride, it, ride him around. Bob. Okay. And moving on, on, moving on, moving on. No, like, that's what we talked about, his baby shoulders. His baby shoulders. His ba he does have baby shoulders. Yeah. 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 Sorry, but they are now. <laughs> yeah, we brought Kristen back to life by clapping. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe in Kristen. I do believe in Kristen. I do. All right, sorry. Anyway. Yes, Greg, that's good. That's good that you're uh six four. <laughs> I wanna I wanna read Greg's comments. Okay. Details on upcoming Xbox One up updates. Details on upcoming Xbox One updates revealed. The next update will see an overhaul of the friends system allowing users to see what their friends are playing and also their game scores. I did not know that that wasn't already included. Is that not included in the, in the Xbox One friend system right now? You can't see what your friends are doing? Yeah. You can't see their gamer scores? I'm really confused by I, that. I would have figured that we'd have a favorite section in our friends by now. Yeah, Xbox where's that at, too? Yeah, Sony. Come on, Sony. Everybody's got to do better. Slacking. Sorry, keep going. The party app will also see changes allowing for much easier creation and also faster management tools. On top of that, users will be able to choose what their system boots into from standby. That includes booting to television. However, the biggest addition is a new media application allowing for users to play media from a USB device and also from a network connected home media server that supports DNLA protocols. And finally, although not to be supported immediately, the Xbox One will support a wider range of file types Eventually, such as MPEG 2 TS and MKB. MKB is a big is one huge. There. That is awesome. That is crazy that they're actually allowing that to happen. Because that is most often considered the pirate. Uh, That's basically pirate. That is the most pirate pirate annoying game. container. Because yeah. Whenever I. I download something that's MP, M, in like M, MKV, I always legally. have to... When you legally download Legally, whenever I download MKV. something legally in MKV, I always have to like re-encode it. Yeah. And, well, it's it's just a container. MKV is just a container yeah, it's that all contains this. like an MP4 file or whatever it may be. And, yeah. Yeah, definitely. If somebody so has a PS3, the only way that you, the only thing that you can really do is play ABI, MP4, you can't play MKV, so... You know what I hope comes out of this announcement? Have you noticed that whenever Microsoft announces like an update, Sony is like a week later? Right. Oh, we're doing it too! Don't worry guys! Also, awesome. like, now we have media playback. Yeah, you know, it's just, it seems like it, they're always like right, right next to each other. It's like they're just waiting for the other person to say it so they so they can be like, alright, we gotta push it out now, we gotta rush this. So, hopefully this forces Sony's hand as well in order to include some of those features. Deluxe Scar, thank you for your friend request, man. Uh, we're done with our... Level update, we're going to open up the lines, guys, on Skype. Anthony, would you mind posting the Skype ID? It's going to go in the chat room for you guys. It's the Level Up Show, spelled exactly how it sounds. Just uh, call into that ID, and we can talk about any of the big news stories from this week. Also, since we're now done with Level Update, I'm going to take the opportunity to give some introductions here. Guys, if you're new to the show, this is the Level Up Show. We are a gaming dedicated talk show on every Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm Andrew. This is Mike, Anthony, and Kristen. We've been on for an hour, but we'll be here for at least another hour. If you like the show so far, or if you like it moving far forward uh, into the night, Please check out our channels below, twitch.tv slash the level up show. Heart us on there to get email notifications whenever we go live. I said Mark was probably like five five. No, no Mark's not. taller than that. Is no, he? Mark, yeah, I'm five five. Yeah, Mark's like five eight probably. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm about five nine. No, no, Anthony, like and five, Mark, six, Anthony and Mark are probably like the same height, right? No, Mark's a little bit shorter than I am. Oh, is he? Okay. And Maybe five seven. Lon77Lon wants to know if there's any news on Little Big Planet 3. 
Uh, there, there are some videos online for Little Big Planet 3 showing off some of the new creation tools, such as the jump pad that allows you to jump layers, which is really cool and could really actually open up the game in a big way. Uh, it was always restricted by those three layers and the other Little Big Planets, but now you have a big distance that you can jump in and out of the screen. So that's really cool. Um, those are the big things that have been shown off for Little Big Planet 3. They haven't like released news per se, as well as more so gameplay videos. Skype is open, guys. Yeah. Actually, Skype. Skype is open. You can call in. So please do. Should I give another clue? Um, yes, right after I finish off with our roundup here. Guys, if you, uh, again, if you're liking the show, please go on Twitter at The Level Up Show, level spelled LVL. Follow us on there. Like us on Facebook. Check out our official website, TheLevelUpShow.com, for articles, editorials, Boosh. reviews. Boosh. Boosh. YouTube.com slash The Level Up Show, level spelled LVL. We archive all of our shows, Let's Plays, and more. We do video blogs video reviews, we divide up this show into segments for you guys. We're getting a call, so let's answer this. Hey, what's going on, bud? Welcome to the Up Show. Hello? Hey, Will, how you doing, man? You're on the Level Up Show. Uh, how you doing, guys? How you guys? Is this Tempest? Yes, it is. I can tell by your voice. Okay. There you go. This is how well we know our fans. <laughs> right? We know our fans so well that we can tell by their voices. Um, but Tennis, yeah. how you doing, man? Not too bad. How are you, uh, how are you guys doing? Oh, hey. doing really good, man. We had a great week because Gamescom was this week, but uh, what do you want to talk about? Um, actually, I was going to talk about a couple things. Um, actually, I was going to talk about PT, but the other gentleman before uh, before you talked about 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 it. But I was going to say uh, I enjoyed your stream uh, Drew the other night uh, when you were playing. Cause I thought that was was some funny stuff. That's all I have to say. I'll yeah. just leave it as that. First, I would say let's call Ethan a gentle child. He's definitely not a man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, but thank you, Ethan, for your call. Yeah, PT was so exciting to play live, knowing nothing going into it. It was just so exciting to have everybody in there, like kind of excited with me because they wanted to see my reactions to to the events and especially the ending, which was just a shocker for sure. Um, that was so much fun. If you guys want to check it out, it's all on YouTube. Yeah, and which was really funny. And the funny thing, I was going to actually mention about uh, Norman Reedus because actually, I'm going to get a chance to actually meet him in a couple of weeks. Um, we have um, a convention in, in um, uh, near Toronto in Canada um, where it's like a, it's like a fan con type thing, and uh, there's a lot of uh, there's people in the gaming community, as well, um, actors and, and and comic books and all that. That kind of stuff, yeah. and I'm actually going to get a chance to actually meet him um, in person. Wow. So I'm kind of, kind of looking to kind of forward that. So a bunch of other people from um, um, the Walking Dead there as well. And, the, and the, I met Stanley last year, and he's there again this year. But I'm, I really didn't want to talk about that. But I just thought it kind of it kind of fits in with the PT stuff, which I thought was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, actually, the only thing I was going to talk about was the the two new games that are coming out. Uh, I believe on Tuesday that I kind of actually looking forward to is the um, Diablo and um, the Plants vs. Zombies. I, yeah. And uh, I'm, I, I know I, I'm getting them. Um, I just I, I wanted to know your thoughts on them. I'll let you take this one, Mike, because Mike was having a little bit of a conundrum. I actually, here. yeah, I almost didn't get Diablo because um, I, I wanted to get one or the other because with, with Destiny, I actually wasn't going to get either, but I was going to get anything. Cause once Destiny comes out, I'll be honest with you, I probably won't play anything for majority of the holiday. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much going to be the game I play, plus whatever we get else for PlayStation Plus. Um, so I was going back and forth, getting, you know, get it, should I not get it, whatever. And then all of a sudden I started doing the stuff we are doing, uh, this week's Wild Game Appears is going to be Plants vs. Zombies. Spoiler alert. So, alive. yeah, not that we all post the... <laughs> yeah, the agenda's the agenda anyway. But, you know, all of a sudden I'm looking at all the stuff and I'm watching the videos, like, oh, actually I really want this, and I was going back and forth, but I'm getting, I already purchased Diablo 3. It's sitting there in preload, you know, just waiting to They're doing the so. preload with Diablo? Yeah. Very so nice. Tomorrow, yeah, actually, so you got to get... Actually, doing preload for both games. Actually, exactly. mine are. Actually, I just got messaged like about an hour ago that it's ready to preload. Very cool. Open, like tomorrow, or whatever. It's only out away, right? Um, I watched some guys stream it, and, and um, yeah, they, they actually somehow got the gates early, and and I was really um, I, I was really intrigued by them and how good they actually do look, at yeah. least on the streams, yeah. anyway. So it's really, it's really sweet. I, I love, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm psyched for it. I'm dying to play. Yeah, the it. streams are doing really well for Diablo. It's a fun game to watch. So yeah. I can are see you why. Playing it at some point? Uh, not this year, yeah. probably, but there's potential. Yeah. Like, you know, if I'm feeling a little bit of a ball in games, mm -hmm. then I could definitely pick it up. Seeing as how next year's going, it's probably not going to be next year. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the only, the only reason I, I get it, I was planning originally to get the. Um, 
Destiny, the, the big edition. I actually had my hands on it and paid for it and everything. And then I kind of thought about it, like going, well, uh, uh, oh, you know, I can still get the game and then uh, take all the extra money that I have left over and turn around. And like, that's one. That's why I end up buying, picking up the album and the Plants vs. Zombie. At least it gives me yeah. three games. Right. I'm still getting Destiny and, and get, now getting the other game because, uh, you know, every, I guess everyone's money's tight. Uh, yeah. But then, and right. And, and, and I know people are complaining about, hey, there's um, all these games are getting canceled. I'm kind of actually glad in some ways because yeah, um, um, because the gamer tech person I am, I, I try different things. I just don't want to have to spend all the extra money that I don't need to uh, well, see, uh, diverse it out. In, in, or, you know. Let's not say canceled, though. Whatever. Delayed. Yeah. No, no, I'm not saying canceled. I mean, I'm just, just delayed. That's right, what I'm cool. talking about. Exactly. I'm actually canceled glad would be a bad thing. We don't want games canceled. Right. Right. We want, sometimes <laughs> we want games delayed. delayed. Yeah, definitely. I'm delayed. I'm delayed. I'm kind of glad that it keeps it keeps my right. uh, wallet um, a little more open. Right, all three of us, man. Okay, we all so, agree. All right, Tempest, Will, thanks oh, again for calling, man. Uh, no, no problem. Take it easy, guys. Have a good night. You, you too. Know. See you later, man. Bye. Bye. Uh, Temp is always a great caller. Will, I didn't know his name was Will until right now, but thanks so much, man, for calling in, as always. Will, I am. Another call immediately? Okay, I think it's just a... Uh, well, do we want to start our topic of the week, potentially, right now? Is that what we want to do, yeah? Yeah, I mean, that's what's next, if we're ready for it. So, uh, whoops, let's go back here. Sorry, guys, I'm shutting off the lines right now, but we will open Skype back up later, so you guys can call in, because we're going to be... Back. Rick is back, which is great news. Uh, let me make sure I'm on the right. Yep, I am. It's not the so, without Rick. Guys, Rick is here. We're getting a call. That's the problem. Is I don't think it really works that way on this. Um, I'm just going to let it go. Guys, uh, we're not going to be taking calls for right now. We're going to be doing Gamescom 2014 discussion because uh, big week up. Uh, first, though, we have hit 200. So Pterodactyl Andrew must be introduced. And then we can move on to Gamescom. Should I give my hit? After I do ga- after I do Pterodactyl Andrew, then we do hit. Pterodactyl Andrew. Pterodactyl Andrew. Yeah! All right. Hold on, wait. Do you hear this from other parts of the house when he does it? Yeah, sometimes. Like when you're <laughs> doing like the blah, 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 stuff like that, I can hear that stuff like. Yeah. Oh, and now Mike's next oh, hit yes. for what his real name is. What that means is that Mike is adopted, and he his birth name. Is different than Mike. That was what your adoptive parents were. Yeah, yeah. So we don't know. None of us. We're his best friends, and we do not even know what Mike's original name was. So, so what was the first hint? The first hint was that in some way, shape, or form, it has a connection with Martin Lawrence. Right. So, what's the second hint? And the he name? said it was kind of like an odd name. The name is commonly thought of as a European name. It's from one European country in particular. Okay. That's... It's a European name. Yes. Okay. It has to do with Martin I'm Lawrence. I'm not surprised. Because remember I said this. I had a feeling it was going to have like some type of ethnic sound to it or something like that. That's why. Because you keep saying it's it's not usual. So that's not a surprise. It's not usual for the U.S. It's not usual for the U.S. I thought his name was Federico, but I was wrong. Nope. Frederica. That would be awesome. All right, so there His you go, guys. Rick Ross. That is your second hint for Mike's real name. Well, Black keep Bulldog. on guessing. So one of the rules is, if one Boosh. of you guys guesses it in the chat room, he has to admit that it has yes. been guessed. So, guys, guess away. Wait, it has been guessed? No, if it is guessed in the chat room, a rule no. is that Mike must admit that that is correct. Like he can't like just let it go. Like if someone guesses it and he sees it, I'm gonna answer this just because uh, I recognize it too. Roman, Maybe. who's A? Let's see if we can get this call. Wilhelm, that'd be awesome. <laughs> hey, how you doing, man? Good, how are you doing? Doing great. Uh, you are on the Level Up show. What's going on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Real quick, this has nothing to do with games, but the lady that you guys have on there is absolutely gorgeous. Who's ever wife that is? <laughs> oh, girl. Too late. <laughs> Sorry. That was, I think, the, uh... I, I'm sorry, I can't take calls like that. It's just too... <laughs> he said it had nothing to do with games. I can't... Yeah. I can't... What, do you think he was going to be mean? I don't know. I couldn't take the chance. Sorry, B, if you wanted to talk about something gaming-related, you could have, but, uh, you know, we have too many calls trying to troll, so... Uh, I was going to skip that one before it went to somewhere <laughs> we didn't want it to go. Um, but, guys, we'll open up the lines again later, so you guys can call Caesar, about Jason, Gamescom. Master, Rome, Federick, Bigelow, Peter, Tomas, Cornelius, James, Skywalker. Tomas. It's one of those. 
Are you serious? Yep. Are you serious? Yep. It's Tomas. Nope. Oh my god! Oh my god! We almost got his name! No, wait, 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 huh? You have to admit it! No, no, no. Caesar! Oh, stop. Stop. <laughs> oh my god! Hold Somebody guessed it! Hold up. Out of those names listed, it's one of them. Here's the catch. You have to all agree as a consensus which the name is, and you are going to present me with the name that you think what it was, is at some point in the names? show. What were the list of names again? Alright, can you say them again real quick? Take a vote on everybody's thing. Okay. S sorry, B. Someone guessed his name. All right, okay. so one of those is the name. So you all have to form a consensus and figure out which one of them it's going to be. Yeah. Okay, we have, these are the choices. Cornelius. Tom Don't do it right now. We're going to start with this. Everybody in the chat, give your votes on what you guys think it's going to be. I was going to give the options. Okay, go ahead. Cornelius, Tomas, James, Skywalker. <laughs> Not Skywalker. <laughs> Voldemort, Caesar. Voldemort, that would be awesome. Frederick, Jerome, Max, Jason, Peter, Giuseppe. Okay, I, I, I think I would guess Milan. Should I guess? I mean, like, what are we doing here? Are we waiting? No, everybody. You let you, let you guys guess. So you guys, you guys have cards. Get all the get the compile of names. Okay. When everybody says what name they think it's going to be, put write the name down. <laughs> all right, all right, guys. Oh. We're almost there. Yep. We almost have we it. Got, I right. think it's Caesar. I guys, know you do. All right, so wait, keep a tally. Come on. Oh, this is difficult. Okay, well, guys. Then this is keep the posting. We're gonna write down what we think it is. Ethan R. It's probably not James because Mike said it's an uncommon name. All right. I... <laughs> all right. All right. I'm just gonna let Chris. Well, save it for later. Yeah. We're gonna move on to Gamescom 2014 discussion, beginning oh with Microsoft. But let's say, as a whole, this Gamescom was awesome. It's awesome in, in in all forms. Yeah. You know, not only do we have the reveal for Call of Duty that went more into detail, that was really yeah. awesome, which I'm gonna touch on in Microsoft's portion. Yeah. You know, because they did their own little thing. But Microsoft's was great. I'll tell you right now, I will give it to Sony. They're conference was better than even any of the ones at E3 period. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, but Microsoft did a phenomenal run. Speaking of Microsoft, right. we're going to start immediately. Uh, what was that? Sound is off. Okay. I'm going to keep the sound off. We'll just play. Guys, these are all of the big things that we uh, we think are from right. Gamescom. We're not getting a uh, cap of every single trailer, but yeah. we, we wanted to show the ones we felt had the biggest impact. Yeah. And right here is one of them. This was phenomenal. We yeah. just talked about this on Tuesday. You know, as far as graphics go, it's it blew me away. Mm -hmm. You know, draw distance, the amount of detail you can still th see through the stained glass. Um, you know, the amount of detail like in I know it's hard to see on this TV, but I mean the amount of detail in all these little things is phenomenal. Um, I'm I think I'm more than anything, it's the crowd. I mean, how many people they have on screen? What was it? Supposedly with dynamic like animation and all that kind of stuff. I mean, at the very end, you can see that there. Yeah. It looks like there's potentially hundreds or thousands of people. I don't know how they're pulling this off, or if it's kind of like a like kind of tricked. It's like faked. I don't I don't know for sure, but it's very very exciting and impressive. Uh, for and it, it makes sense for an Assassin's Creed game. This is where I think a lot of people wanted the next gen systems to help. In Assassin's Creed, 100%, and that definitely did. Um, I mean, not only that, but the mechanics have been reconstructed from the ground up. Yeah, much more agile right after I'm done Microsoft's thing. Yeah. So they they actually took away all the mechanics from the original ones and just rebuilt it from the ground up. I have to know. All right, we're gonna do we're it. We'll get soon. there. I can't wait. He said, okay, I'm gonna say real quick that he said it's related to Martin Lawrence, and I'm trying not to be like whatever, but Jerome is the most obviously related to Martin Lawrence, in my opinion, I would think. I mean... So far, we have a lot of those for Caesar and Cornelius. I, I don't see so you guys those. Have to... Those are both from the Planet of the Apes. Anyway, this is the first look that we had at the uh, the newest section. <laughs> Speaking of, yeah, Assassin's Creed. But yeah, it, it really this does This is the first great. look that we had at the new Assassin's Plus, you get to see this... I mean, it looks like a temple for the, the Assassins. Is it um, the, the, the Assassin or is it the Templars? No, the Templars always have a temple. The Assassins don't usually have uh, okay. something like that. So that's actually really cool that you see that you seem to have like an order of Assassins. Yeah. Almost like a council. Yeah. So that's actually really sweet. Um, yeah. Pause it real quick. Now we did see a little bit more below. Yep. Uh, I know you're really looking forward to this. I think yeah, it's kind I of interesting. I might. I'm, I'm still on the on the fence about it. Um, Here's the one thing about below is that we always thought it was a hundred percent Xbox exclusive. Right. It it sounds like now that they're saying during the conference they said first to console. 
on Xbox mm-hmm. One. So it was almost like a negative for a Microsoft con- conference to say that because now it feels like okay, we're going to get it on PS4 at some point. Right. And so uh, I'm excited because I think it looks like one of the best games they've got going on over there. That and Inside and Ori and the Blind Forest mm-hmm. are like my big three that I'm hoping come to PS4 right. eventually from, uh, from right. Microsoft. Right, and we found out that three other three games in total are going to start on Microsoft first though. Yeah. Which is great for them for their yeah. idea at Xbox. Yeah. Uh, which is awesome. So uh, Below looks really good. The added gameplay that we saw looks definitely more entertaining. After that, we got a very strange looking game. Yeah, it, it's it's weird. It's called, uh, it's called, well, you'll see in a second. They had, the, the trailer was very odd, too. It's called yeah. Super Hot. Um, so basically, as you move, time moves. So very much like the Swapper, um, which is kind of interesting in that sense. Um, yeah. But it also has like a very Mirror's Edge style to it. Um, and I feel like a lot of the mechanics are also take, taken from you know, Metal Gear Solid. You know, so if you combine the mechanics of Metal Gear Solid with Braid, I feel like that's what you would get with this. Now combine it with the graphics of Mirror's Edge, and bam, you have Super Hot. Yeah, it really does look like a Is that, is that a good representation yeah. of what yeah. it looks like? Yeah, I, I, I can know? agree with that. It, they're not showing a lot here, obviously. They're, no. They're not telling us what this game is about mechanically or story. Uh, wise, so uh, yeah, we're just gonna have to wait and see. But, but there you go again, first to console and Xbox One. There's there you go. One. There's another one for you, right. first to console. Right. Hello, so that's big super them. hot. So that's actually a pretty cool thing for them. They have another big mechanic, you know, another big game coming to them. Well, not big game, but another really interesting looking indie game. Okay. Yeah, we'll come to them first. Uh, now, is this the trailer that you put next? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I think I switched it out with the one that you wanted to see. Drum. Okay. I've seen if I got a rise out of them. <laughs> Alright, so this is the trailer that I liked. Um, I love this. This is a good, quick little trailer that shows a lot of the cool details of it. But this is for Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Um, there's a lot more deep uh, player customization, um, and including that now in the matchmaking lobbies, because there's such, you actually get to see the other characters. Yeah. Um, so when I'm in a lobby, instead of just seeing a list of names, I actually get to look at your complete loadout, what your character looks like, all the customization that you did, whether you change your color scheme and everything like that, you know, what you're using. Um, each player is very different, as you'll, as you know, I saw in the thing. So I would definitely look at some of these videos. Um, they added what's called supply drops. Um, supply drops give you equipment that you'll be able to use mm-hmm. um, in both the game, you know, in general. Um, this is how you would get extra weapons and everything like that. Kind of similar to um, the spe- the special crates that you get in Battlefield, uh, which is really cool. Uh, they brought back score streaks. As you'll see right here, they have interactive maps. So in this one, a big giant tsunami comes and wipes away the people in the bottom level of the map. Uh, other things like that happen. But on top of that, too... You have a lot of interactive maps in the way of you can set up turrets and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um, as you saw in there, you can swim. That's crazy. That's something that's not been done in any of the Call of Duty series yet. So they borrowed a lot of mechanics from the battlefield, it looks like, as well. Um, but as a lot of this is what you're seeing of is the, the mech suit. Um, the big one that you see is that it can, you, know, you can jump high and strafe quick left and right. Um, and you saw for a minute earlier that you could actually fly, hover for a second. Um, that's one of the mechanics. You also have a shield that can come up. Uh, you saw earlier as well that you can go stealth. You know, you're not completely invisible, but you're pretty darn close to it. Um, so there's a lot of mechanics that come in with this mech suit. Yeah, when you <laughs> that was also a little. This is oh, yeah, seriously. That's, what it looked that's like. essentially what it is. I think that's why they did it. So there's a lot of mechanics that are, you know, they're changed. You know, I don't know. It's it, it's definitely really exciting. It's I a wonder. reinvention of the series for sure. I would say. Yeah, I, I think I actually might get it. If I feel like if there's a little low where I'm not playing Destiny online mood as much as I thought I was going to, I definitely will get this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's go to a few questions from the chat room real quick. Oh, and uh, laser guns. And laser guns. laser guns. Laser guns, obviously. So here you go. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. First off, someone's asking, what is the level up show? And uh, we had a few kind people in our chat room answer that, but let me answer it as well. Uh, anybody who doesn't know who we are, we are the level heated talk show. We're on every... <laughs> Sorry, that's really is this Sparta? No, this is Patrick. <laughs> you ever watch SpongeBob? No. Oh, is that an actual joke <laughs> from the show? Yeah, it's a joke from the show. It's re- no, not Sparta, but you said something else. Ah. It, hi, is this the Krusty Clap Crab? No, this is Patrick. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's like, oh, that's really wow. Funny. I can't believe you picked up on that. But a guy who watches it constantly. Gaming dedicated talk show. We're on every Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern time. We go for about two to two and a half hours, and we talk about all the biggest game industry news as well as doing topic of the week. This week we're doing Gamescom 2014. We do take calls. We shut off the lines for right now, but we will open them up, obviously. And between each game, I'm going to try and r- write down some questions from you guys. Here's a good question related to this. If you had to choose, Mike, would you choose Call of Duty Advanced Warfare or Destiny? Oh, Destiny. Destiny would like be my choice around. as well. As, as much as I think Advanced Warfare looks like exactly what this franchise needs, it's a new developer, Sledgehammer, working on this franchise, having a three-year development cycle. 
that is great news for Call of Duty. They're really adding a lot of new features and functionality and, and mechanics, but Destiny is a new IP. And I, I, I love new IPs, I love supporting new IPs, yes. especially um, in MMO FPS, which is not something that we get typically on console. So right. I think that's great news. So thank you for that question. We're going to move on to our next. Nope. Oh, no, not yet, because this one you didn't have a video yeah, for. Yeah, so the next two we didn't have a video for because there wasn't really anything. Well, there was something new showing off. Yeah. Uh, but it was a lot more of the same. Uh, but the Evolve, they, they talked about Evolve for a little while, showed off the new map and everything like that. Um, and they talked about how the beta is still exclusive to Xbox, and now it's coming in January since they pushed it back. Hey, yeah. Frederick. Um, huh? He didn't answer to Frederick. No, he just said, huh. It's not gonna be Frederick. That's not. He's your... smiling. Look, look at him. I guessed Frederick before. There's no way. That... I guessed Frederick. Oh my god. I'm not gonna let this go. All right. No. Moving on. First of all, Frederick is such an obvious name. That, that Fred. Fred's a normal name. Up. I don't know. I don't think it's Fred. But moving on. Sorry. Keep going. Evolve beta. Evolve beta. It's going to start in January. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now. Biggest mind. Oh my god. This is something that we couldn't get away from for yeah. days. And yeah. we still can't get away from it because yeah. there's still angry people out there. I know Carlos is a big fan of this. Yes. Um, but how about the rise of the Tomb Raider announcement? Do you want to take this call? Let's see what this is about. Hey, Brianna, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> This isn't Brie, is it? Uh, no. Okay, no. I wasn't sure if it was Brie or not. Um, but welcome to the show. This is a Love Love Show. What do you want to talk about this week? Watchdogs. 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 I actually haven't gotten to play it. I've seen a lot of it played, yeah. but I haven't gotten to play it myself. Yeah, neither have I. I've heard pretty good things. Most people uh, enjoy it, but they don't think it quite lived up to the hype. Uh, what about you, Brianna? Do you think it lived up to the hype? Yeah, I think it's really cool. Yeah? What is your favorite parts of it? Do you like, like, have you played any other games like it that are open world, or what is your favorite part of doing it? I like chasing people down. <laughs> chasing people down? <laughs> yeah. That's like the best part. Uh, that's kind of something that they kind of pulled a little bit from Assassin's Creed, oh, obviously. I mean, this is the same, if you don't know, Bray, uh, Watch Dogs is done by the same guys that did Assassin's Creed, so it kind of has a little bit of that chase uh, functionality in there. But in Watch Dogs, the difference is that you get to look into people and what they've done in the past and stuff like that, and if you choose that they have done something wrong, or if they've murdered somebody or something like that, then you could choose yeah, you to have change them. what to do with them or not. And sometimes yeah. you can choose to be bad even, I guess. If do you play the online at all, or...? What? Did you play the online, or did you just play the story mode? Story mode. Story mode. Very cool. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Any other games you're looking forward to, uh, Bree? No? No, nothing else? If you like if you like Watch Dogs, I'd, I'd probably say look at getting Assassin's Creed. I think you might like it. It's very similar, so. Yeah, I played that before, too. Very cool. All right, Brianna, thanks for calling in. You're welcome. All right, see you later. Pussy wants you to say no and let it go. Like... <laughs> you have a choice. I'll tell you what my name is, or I'll sing Let Go. Uh, thank you to Brianna. So you can disappoint a fan. Or... First time caller there? No, everyone in here wants to know your name. Well, first of all... Somebody literally just posted in the room that there is a youth that that Martin Lawrence plays a YouTube character named Jerome. It's either Jerome or Frederick. Uh oh. No. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> we might have figured this out. Wait, say that again. Martin Lawrence played. Apparently, he plays a, a YouTube character named Jerome. We're getting a lot of calls, and I don't mind taking them. It's fine. Um. All right. Jonathan, welcome to the Level Up Show. How you doing? Frederick. Uh, John, uh, you were on a delay. Okay, never mind. Um, guys, so you guys can go with Jerome, but just remember, if you guys get it wrong, you won't know it's until next It's either Frederick or Jerome. I think it's Jerome. Uh, but guys, if you are calling in, make sure that you mute your TV and pay attention to Skype, not the TV, yeah. because you will be on a delay and uh, you won't, you'll have be very confused, and so will we. Let's go into this real quick. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yes. All right. There's been a lot of Got negativity it. going around about it. Let's just go cut to the chase. It, it was announced in a way, uh, it, it was worded as a Microsoft exclusive. Yeah. They, the, their wordplay was very well done. Microsoft was very good at spinning it, but it came out to be, it's pretty much confirmed, it's, it actually is confirmed, Tomb Raider is going to come out for all systems, just Eventually. originally it's going to start initially 
on the Microsoft Xbox. I think the exact wording Phil Spencer had is that the Xbox One version has a duration, is what he said. Yes. Um, Now, what's kind of shady about this is it took a lot to get this out of them, and people are very kind of offended by that, that they tried so hard to keep this secret. Um, That's my final answer, too. Yeah? Um, Yeah, I think that's my final answer. Uh, Sorry, keep going. Forget, we gotta forget that for now. (laughs) We have to move on! All right. Um, beyond. Beyond. <laughs> um, God, where were we? So, yeah, I mean, this offended a lot of people. A lot of people were really upset, not just that PlayStation fans that are, you know, people have played the Tomb Raider series since the very beginning on PlayStation. It's just a, a little offensive that they would decide to make it exclusive Xbox One. But on top of that, just the shadiness of them trying to hide it so hard and then for it to come out a few days later that, okay, yeah, it'll eventually right. come to the other system too. We're, you know... It's just, it, it's, it rubs people the wrong way, and it makes, now, it makes Microsoft look big. Now that we have a full array of people that are watching, yeah, this is actually not that bad of a thing. No, I don't think so either. Uh, realistically, you have Uncharted, the new Uncharted, Uncharted 4 technically, coming out next holiday. Yeah. You have Tomb Raider coming out next holiday, which... <laughs> Sorry, Captain Batman, WHERE'S THE TRIGGER?! Where's the trigger? Wish you really you want to give it to a normal civilian. You want to give it to a normal citizen. Yeah, you done? Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, I'm done. I'm sorry. We are just off the rails tonight. Um, no, no, it's it, no, it's, it's it's not a bad thing. And you actually were the one that brought this up. You know, you have both of them coming out at the same time. People realistically on the PS4 are likely going to steer towards Uncharted than they are towards you know, Tomb Raider. Yeah. So it probably would have lost sales. So given this time exclusive to Microsoft, allows Square Enix to get these sales that they wouldn't have gotten, you know, or they would have still gotten on the Xbox, but then later on after the delay, after not having Uncharted 4 released within weeks of it, bam, you're done. Yeah, so run a little behind, so why don't you move on to the next one? Yeah, so the next one is actually going to be a little bit disappointing to most people. Mm-hmm. I feel like. Oh, um, I liked it. I thought it was great. But this is Quantum Break. Uh, it was a little too long in most people's opinions. Um, but I think did you did you cut this up? I think I cut it up exactly. Good. All right, so you, he cut this up, and it's it's a perfect little tiny piece, I guess you could say, of the whole demo that showed off which was like awesome. Ten minutes long. Stop mechanics. Yeah. I mean, the the particle effects and everything in this game were phenomenal. Um, especially you can tell the detail in the slow time. Uh, so everything stopped. You see the streaks in the sky. Look at the bird. The bird that yeah. was shown right there. Um, just everything is stopped perfectly. It doesn't look fake or anything like that. It looks like it's realistic. It's actually stopped. So very cool. And you get to, like, as he's walking by, you see how the stuff moves right. as he pushes through it. Uh, kind of like Matrix style. You know, you can grab the bullet even though the, the time is frozen kind of stuff. And this is kind of like almost like they wanted to get the Max Payne bullet time back, but they didn't want to do bullet time. So right. instead, they allowed you to stop time. For those that don't know, this is, these are the same guys that created Max Payne. Remedy is what they're called, right. the developer. Um, um, they also did uh, uh, Alan Wake, right. is what they're also well known for, which I hear very good things about. Now, um, E. Raymond, but before we go on, E. Raymond wants to know, it, uh, Tomb Raider is, a micro, is an Xbox exclusive, why are we promoting it? Well, A, it's not an Xbox exclusive, and B, even if it was an Xbox exclusive, what the hell does that mean? Yeah, yeah we don't promote right, anything. Right, we, we'll, we'll talk about anything video games. Sony, yeah. Nintendo, yeah. you know, even we'll talk about iPad stuff a couple times. Uh, guys, this is not only streaming on PS4, this is on yeah. Twitch, and you can even watch this on Xbox One. So, we are not a PS4 exclusive stream, and we talk about everything in the gaming industry, and we don't play favorites. So, uh, this looks like a great game, um, and people are excited about it, so we're going to talk yeah. about it. But so this actually looks really cool. I'm actually, I'm actually seeing that like now that you've cut it up and just watching this, it looks much more entertaining. It was a little slow. They could have right. done a little bit better of job of showing it, showing it all. The graphics are phenomenal, but we get that point across very quickly. Right. It's like we we can see this looks great. So get into the excitement, you know. Show off a little bit of exploration for one or two minutes. Get into combat for two or three minutes, you know. Don't do five minutes of slow exploration and uh, exploration, and then finally five minutes of combat. And you don't even need five minutes of combat either. It's just a little. It's a little too right. much in my opinion. So even this clipped up trailer, like this was a long trailer that yeah. you even should, we just showed up now, and that was clipped up. So. Yeah. And this is, oh man, just little little so quick uh, snippets here also of, of exciting moments, like him jumping and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Really looks cool. Looks like a very cool cinematic game, and obviously it in- incorporates some type of TV show as well that right. focuses on the villains of the series. So you know what I thought was the coolest thing was that we kept going into like sepia. 
It's like an old Yeah, the TV picture. affects the surroundings as well. <laughs> We're almost at 250, which is Giraffe Kristen. We're almost there. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, no. All right, um, moving All right, on so from that. real quick, uh, Fable Legends. Um, I'll be I'll be frank here. So I'm going to say, I, I love Fable series. Fable 1, I was all into. Fable 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. Mm -hmm. In general, Fable Three I even enjoyed, especially more so on my second playthrough. I don't give two shits about Fable Legends, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. So let's go on to the next one. Um, this is an interesting one. This is the one that drew. <laughs> you don't. You're not doing it right, damn it. I just. I need to be quick. All right. So this right here is one of their new uh, reveals. Oh, wow. 250 is Draft Kristen, you can't deny it. Uh, it's called Scream Ride. It's coming in spring of next year. Um, and it kind of looks like a twist on both Roller Coaster Tycoon meets, what was that game called? Pain? Meets Saul. Just game looks freaking creepy. What? Well, you know, like <laughs> Pain, I think, was what. Was that's what, yeah, yeah, pain that's is what 250 good. should be. It should be Mike's name. No. They're, yes! They're, that's more secretive. <laughs> But we, yeah, I mean, this game, it starts off like, oh, this looks awesome. Cool. This right. looks like fun. You're creating your own roller coasters and everything like that. You get yeah. people to go ride them and everything like that. Um, you build your whole towers around These them. These cute like little that. humans. Right. right. And then, suddenly, the game just takes a turn for the worst here. We're just getting more and more crazy. Now, suddenly, what? Somebody just fell out of the coaster? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> now we're just destroying the rides and throwing them to their death? What is happening? Why are we murdering these people? This is terrible. Drew is really upset by this, by the it's way. It's just creepy. You can tell. I think it's entertaining, and I understand why he's creeped out by it. I am a little bit too. It's really weird that in a game They're like screaming. this, they decided to use, uh, they can't hear that, but it's really weird that they decided to use actual, like, semi-realistic, like, semi, like, people faces. Yeah. They didn't use, like, cartoon, like, imagine, like, if they use, like, teddy bears or something like that. That'd be hilarious. But they actually use people's faces that look kind of like Sims, and they actually make them scream. And so it's actually kind of creepy. But it, overall, the gameplay itself, I actually would get this. If I have what if I, I'm probably gonna have get my Xbox One by then, I'll pro I'll most likely be getting this game. It definitely looks entertaining to a point. I, I just if you were to be realistic, the blood and carnage that would happen from those events would be disgusting. <laughs> um, so that's what I keep thinking about. Three more, and I have to be a giraffe. Giraffe. Giraffe um, Kristen's almost here. Giraffe. Now, we didn't show another trailer for this because we've seen so much of it already, and it's, it was a little bit more just of the same. Yeah. Um, but Forza Horizon 2 was shown off a little bit more. It still looks great, but what I noticed is there's a lot of uh, mechanics to the gameplay, especially like drop in, drop out, and stuff like that, uh, that remind me a lot of when they announced Drive Club at the PS4 review. Yeah. Do you agree with that or no? Uh, yeah, it does seem... I, I don't think that they added these as, like, a reaction. No. I just think that they are very similar. I right. mean, this is this is where driving is going, these kind of games. It's right. the social connectivity. This is what people are going to be excited about. So it makes sense that both Drive Club and Forza Horizon would include very, very social features. For sure. So, that was actually pretty cool. Yeah, that is um, cool. Now, this next one was, I think, one of your favorite of the entire conference. Always one of my favorites from the from Microsoft conferences. It's called Ori and the Blind Forest. Forest. It's uh, an indie game, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. And the animation and artistic direction is unbelievable. You're more into this than I am, so if you want, you can go ahead and Oh, it. it just, it looks beautiful. You I mean, I, I love the look of it. You can't see clearly on the screen how great this game looks. First of all, it looks like your classic, almost Nintendo-style um, platforming, like trying to escape flooding waters, but the animation is unbelievable, colorful. Uh, the character itself just looks really charming, especially considering how it starts with yeah, Mudhead and beginning. this being left on its own. This little creature to survive. What's interesting about this is he's jumping and everything like that, but he's obviously like quick enough. So he's using it, and it looks like these or things are getting shot down at him to attack him, yeah. but he's able to, instead of getting attacked by them, use them to jump off of? Yeah, kind of, to shoot himself higher. I don't really know exactly how that mechanic works, but I'm, I'm very interested to see how it goes from here. Thank you for the friend request, the Swing Kid. Uh, but this is where it gets, I think, truly phenomenal at the end from like an animation standpoint, and you guys just gotta check this out yourself on YouTube or whatever, check the highest quali quality video you can, but when he gets to the top, check out like the trees mm -hmm. waving, That's my favorite the part moon the and the clouds, and we're almost there, I think it's right here at the very top, he's gonna yep. keep shooting himself up, getting, and there you go, like, and this does no justice, no justice there, but whatsoever. you can see like the but trees waving the background, gorgeous. it reminds me of Tarzan. Remember how Tarzan used yeah. a little bit of CGI? Dance, Thank you for the friend request, Applejack. Dance, off, broke his leg. What color was his blood? Green? 
Did you ever play Tarzan? No. no. Tarzan, jungle man, swinging from a rubber band, fell off, broke his leg. What color was his blood? That's awful. What color was his blood? I don't know. That's just the song. But this, I think, is the creature that is stalking our little. Oh, ah, two fifty-three. I have to oh. be a giraffe. All right, Rip. I pause this. You can go up there. Well, I have to prepare. So give me a second. Uh, I'm prepared. I got oh, your little drawing. I have right. to prepare. Pause. Give me a second. If you leave, the viewers are going to go down. No. Do this. <laughs> if you leave, the viewers are going to go down. The only reason we have 250 is because Kristen is in here. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I think that looks like a really, really cool game. And you, I actually saw there it said only on Xbox and, and PC. So yes. It didn't say first. No, it didn't. So not. it seems like that is 100% Xbox exclusive. So free, good Which for you guys. Good. That's awesome. Yeah, good for so you guys. It looks like guys, an awesome game. You get to have one over on the PS4. Yeah, the PS4 crowd. So. Here we go. Giraffe Kristen is here. Let's see if wow. I can. Uh, it's, it's not clear. Oh, let me come you up here. You can't see it well. I'll, yeah, I'll get close. close. I'll get close. Go ahead. Get... Yeah, no, you have to go to the back. You got to get in the background, I think. You need to go back there. You need to go back in your seat. No. We got to get this right. We got to get this right. Can you see that it's a giraffe? Yes. Oh. Okay, wait. Stay still, Kristen. Come down, Andrew. Move back. Right there. No, move until my neck's longer. Move it down. The, the giraffe neck is already long enough. <laughs> Oh my god, Hi. that noise! <laughs> Draft Kristen! That was the best I think we've ever done. We're getting better at it. That sounded disgusting. Right? We're getting but better that at it. That noise was just grotesque. I hope All right, that was something out of like Silent Hill. Me, me, me. <laughs> it sounded like something out in, in uh, what was it, uh, Bruce Almighty or whatever? <laughs> yeah. <With> that... <laughs> Alrighty, guys, 300 is Dinosaur Team. We actually might hit Dinosaur Team. You might. We might. Alright, guys, uh... We can't. We can't. Tyler, oh, Mark's not here. You're right, Mark's not here. We can't do Dinosaur Team. We need something for 300. We'll do something else. I'll What's figure it out. Dinosaur Team? Dinosaur Team is where I'll we sing, all let go. Act like Dinosaur. Okay, Mike said, sings Let It Go at 300. Alright, um, moving there, on. There you go, Pus. Did didn't, like, uh, we didn't include like this trailer. Sound? What was that? Do you like my sound? We yeah, love your sound. We did not include this trailer. Sunset Overdrive was so... <laughs> All right, moving on. Sunset Overdrive was showing off a little bit more. We saw more gameplay. We got introduced by to a character named Floyd. Not your favorite trailer at all. You saw that was very I overdone. It, it 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 pushed like the what do you want to call it? Trying too hard. And, and and there was always a little bit of that. You know, I always felt like it was trying a little too hard. But at the same time, I was okay with it. It's it's insomniac. That's their charm a little bit. Right. But this one kind of pushed it to a whole new level. And I didn't just really like the way the trailer was paced. I, I don't know. It just kind of turned yeah. me off. And also. Seeing the graphics more up close as opposed to like the pulled out, like, you know, actual gameplay, right. I was like, okay, this doesn't look quite as good as I thought it looked, but it still looks good. I'm not saying it doesn't right. look good. It just, it kind of turned me down a little bit on it. That's all I'm saying. Still, I'm sure it'll be a great game. Just, mm -hmm. you know. All right, 280 already. All right, the next one. This is actually another new um, arcade title. 300? No, we, we decided not on Dinosaur Team for 300. Mike's going to sing Let It Go. Because uh, Mark's not here, we can't do Dinosaur like, Team without. Uh, this is called uh, Smite, I think it's called. Yeah, it's, it's called a new, Smite. It's a new game, uh, and it's a weird take on a MOBA, uh, which is something I'm excited to see come more towards consoles. Uh, MOBAs are something that I would actually be okay playing with, uh, but I just don't play computer games much. Uh, oh wait, so you can't sing Let It Go first of all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> because, I think um, it's the same thing. Yeah. We, because of the the. the Twitch? Not in the way I sing it, trust me. Okay, okay never mind. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, this is first on Xbox One. This is first on Xbox One. It's coming later on. But it's kind of cool because you'll actually, it's, it's all gods. So you'll be, you know, you can be Hercules, Zeus, uh, Poseidon. Thank you, Plum Bum. Um, I think I saw Medusa in there. Um, they only announced a few people so far, but it's, you know, it's going to expand and everything like that. Um, so it's definitely going to be an interesting thing. What? Nothing. Keep what? going. <laughs> Just keep going. I, I don't know where I'm going with this. I don't know where I'm going with this. No, it's no, like, it, it, it's, awesome. it looks really, it looks cool. Actually, I'm, like I said, I'm excited to see more MOBAs come to consoles. So, yeah, you know, yeah, MOBAs are, are a good thing to have on console. They do insanely well on PC. Right. So it makes sense that they'd be trying to make them a big thing on console as well. And then finally, let's move on to the last one. Wow, here. Did you move this on me? 
Uh, yes, because this was the last day right. of their conference. Okay. So the last one is probably everybody's one of everybody's favorites. They detailed more on Halo Five and more so the Halo Remastered Edition. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm I'm ex I'm so excited for this. I, I can't wait to get my Xbox One. Uh, Sanctuary was the remade map that you see there. It looks phenomenal. Um, but as far as the beta goes, they they tease you'll be able to play the beta if you buy the uh, Master Chief Collection. Um, and not only that, you'll get extra stuff from playing the beta if you buy the Master Chief Collection yeah. when the game comes out. Uh, the beta is going to be really big. Um, it doesn't even sound like a beta. Like everybody thought that the Destiny beta was big. This is bigger, in my opinion. Yeah. And um, um, there's seven multiplayer maps to play on. Uh, there's going to be seven different total um, armor sets. You know, and with armor sets, you know, you guys can customize each one. You know, take a helmet from one and a you know chest piece from another one. Uh, so you have all those to play, play around with. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the, the benefit that I think is they're going to focus more on the 4v4 battle arena type mode. Yeah. Um, instead of these big, giant open maps that were found in Halo 4 that were okay to an extent, but it was every single map. It was just too much. It wasn't that great. I think Horan Horn meant Mark there. Mark bulked up. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is Brother Anthony in here right now. Uh, fat gamer guy. Uh, how you doing, man? Welcome to the show. We're so, talking about Gamescom right now. We're just finishing off Microsoft right now right. with their uh, their closer. Which did was you Halo put 5. anything for the Halo Channel? Uh, no, nothing for Halo so Channel. So I'll put that in there too. They also did announce Halo Channel. Um, it, to me, all it looks like though. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> all it looks like to me is a relaunch version of Halo Waypoint Halo. with more supposedly more independent content. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I think the Halo thing, again, they, they, and I said it to you, we talked about Tuesday, they're definitely putting all their eggs in the Master Chief basket. Yeah, um, definitely. I, I don't know how well it's going to do. I mean, I'm sure it's going to do fine, but I don't know exactly overall how well that's really going to do for them. And that, that closes off uh, Microsoft's... Okay, how about, if we had to make a choice, what would you give Microsoft's Gamescom, as far as a rating goes? If you had to decide. Taking into account, obviously, the other conferences. I can't remember when I gave Microsoft an E3. And you gave him an 8. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> I'm obviously feeling better. Yeah, she is obviously feeling uh, better. I would give them an 8.5. 8.5? Eight eight it was definitely better than their E3 one. You really think so? I, think I, did, so. I thought their E3 was better. Um, I would give them I would give them a 7.5 on okay. this one. Um, still not bad, but I, I, there was so much of a rehash, I thought. Okay. A lot of stuff I had already seen at E3, I just saw right. again at Gamescom, and the You're only right. new things were Super Hot, Ride. Smite, Scream Ride. And they were smaller games. So, you, you, I mean, you have a I just, there. I feel, I felt like I it feel wasn't like a lot their flow new. was definitely better than they were at E3. Okay. You know what I mean? I can see that. At E3, actually. that was just like game into game into game, which is cool, but to an extent, like it was just too much, and they didn't really advertise each game well. So, I don't know. I, and I think uh, we're going to get into now what people are a little more excited about since we're more of a PS4 crowd on here. But uh, what were you going to say? <laughs> okay. Secrets. Secrets. You don't have to tell anybody anything. You don't want to tell them. Okay. Can you tell me? Um, moving on, guys. Let's talk about Sony. We got Cyclone Death already. He says he's a Sony pony. <laughs> But we're going to start off with a new trailer for the Order 1886, and in my opinion, this is by far the best trailer that they've released so far. A lot of people were pretty down on uh, the Order at the beginning because I think they chose a really bad slice for their reveal. For their reveal, like months ago, right? And too early oh, too. It just it wasn't ready. It had some frame rate glitches and stuff like that. If you guys don't know, Ready at Dawn, they worked on the God of War games on PSP, and this is their first console game. Um, it has Sony Santa Monica helping them with it. Who Sony Sony Santa Monica helps a lot of developers out because they're such a big team and they they have a lot of experience. And it looks like it has a little bit. Of of that Uncharted linear vibe um, with action set pieces and stuff like that. You can also see that it actually is not 16 by 9. They actually made it even more widescreen than that. I think like 21 by 9 or something like that to give it a, a more theatrical feel. And also to help to improve the graphics because they don't have to render quite as many lines or horizontally now. Like right there, that looks right. that looks beautiful, that scene right there in the cathedral. Um, it looks like a very scary game as well, much scarier than I think we were expecting. Right, more than I expected, yeah. This is a cool moment because it allows you to see that the gameplay really opens up in areas with uh, big combat areas and different costumes and stuff like that. Um, now, the, the order is, I think, 
the Knights of the Round Table hundreds of years later. They essentially, yeah, they exactly. drink this stuff called black water, which keeps them alive because they need to stay alive in order to fight these enemies. I don't know if you want to call them that. They're like half breeds that have been around for hundreds of years. They're um, I'm not sure how they originated. I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit. The game seems to be setting up a mythology for sure, and uh, it looks like it's going to tell a pretty cool story. So if you're into like interactive, linear adventure games, where it doesn't really allow you to spread too far out, um, but it tells, tells a really cool story, and includes Tesla, that trailer. It seems revealed. like he's going to be more of like the Da Vinci of exactly. Assassin's Creed for the Templar, for the Templars, for uh, the Order. Definitely. Graphics so. look excellent, though. And then right after that, at the beginning of Sony's conference, we moved right into... No, you can keep going. Oh, did you put a trailer for all of it? Uh, I don't think I have Little Big Planet here. That's why I paused it. Uh, okay, okay, I guess we can talk about Little Big Planet. <laughs> I talked about Little Big Planet already, but um, all I can really say about Little Big Planet, we got a new trailer, showed off some some of the same stuff we already knew. If you want to see more about Little Big Planet, though, really you should just go online because there were some gameplay uh, videos sent out, like 20 minute long ones showing create mode yeah. and stuff like that, which really shows the new mechanics that they're putting in place that allow you to make entirely new types of levels and games within Little Big Planet 3. It's going to be much crazier than ever. You're going to see more diverse levels than ever before in Little Big Planet. And I'm really excited to see that. It comes out November 18th, I'm pretty sure. And if you pre order it, you get a free Sackboy plushie, which is awesome. But this trailer here, which came after Little Big Planet 3, Japan Studio, as you can see, is Bloodborne, which is done by Miyazaki, the same guy that did Demon Souls and Dark Souls. Only this one is produced by Sony, so it's exclusive to the PlayStation 4. And, um, uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier that they want to try and get a little bit of a wider audience with this, but they did try to reassure fans that it's going to retain what makes the series so memorable among its fans. And that obviously is the the punishment. Okay, no. The punishment, the grotesque nature for sure, right. you're right. I mean, you can see in this trailer, I know it's dark here, check it out online, but the monster designs are terrifying, as they always have been in the Dark and Demon Souls series. You see a weird werewolf tentacle looking monster that looks like something out of Princess Mononoke or something like that. Yeah, it's like the one that you kept going to. Yeah, really, really terrifying stuff though. Music is really awesome. Atmosphere is really cool. Um, the main character uses some type of like axe blade weapon. Um, mm -hmm. And you can you can guard a little bit more in this one. It's a little bit more fast-paced than Demon's Souls and Dark Souls. It's not like those ones where you just block and attack. This one, you have more range of movement. More, You can switch weapons on the fly, it looks like there, like a scythe. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks more like a scythe than anything else. Yeah, you have like an axe blade, then you also have like a scythe. Um, there's that werewolf-looking thing right there, which is terrifying. But really looks like it's going to be awesome game for fans of this series. Something that Mike and I have never gotten into, but we understand no. the hype. We understand right. the attraction right. to this I'm series. I'm excited for you guys. Exactly. It's really cool. Yeah. I, it's, it's kind of one of those things where you know what I'm talking about. I wish I could get into a game like that. Yeah. You know? That's what I said. That's destiny for you. You wish that you, you're trying to, but yeah. you, I'm going to get into it. I'll, I'll, I'm buying it, so I'm going to try. Um, after this... They talked about a game called The Tomorrow Children. Did you put little clips in here? I did not put clips for this one. Um, I skipped this one. It's called. It's done by Q Games, um, which are guys, I think, that did the Pixel Junk series. Now, this one has a little bit of a Minecraft vibe to it, but everything is done with, like, dolls. And they, they look like they're made out of wood, like wood-carved dolls. And other than that, we're very confused, actually, on this game. It has, like, this kind of, like, it's, Russian it's chanting It's Russian it. Minecraft, essentially. Yeah, um, but, it's like, really weird. at one point you look like you're on a tabletop, like a white tabletop with no surroundings. Um, but I do know for sure that it does incorporate some Minecraft mechanics, like collection of materials by mining, stuff like that. Um, so that was the Tomorrow Children, another one of their indie initiative games. After that, their second indie initiative game was called Volume. Now, this one is done by the guy who did Thomas Was Alone. It, everyone was kind of looking at it and saying, this looks like Metal Gear Solid VR missions, in a way. Uh, it has, like, the top-down view in many areas, but, like, the VR style, like, the flat colors and stuff like that. Um, and it looks like it has, like, stealth... Um, could you turn it down? It has, like, stealth aspects to it. The one thing that we took away from it is that the music was awesome had really, really great music and voice acting. So, other than that, there's not a lot we can say. It was a very short trailer, right. but Thomas Was Alone did very well for the, the for the developer. Yeah. And I know a lot of people appreciated that game, so I think that volume... It wasn't your game, though. You didn't really... No, like I didn't even play Thomas Was Alone. No. So, um, I played for a little bit. I just... There's so many other things that I want yeah. to play more. I'll be honest with you. And then somebody just posted in the chat room, we're about to get to it right now, Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Yes. This also uh, was very intriguing for a lot of people. I think Greg said it best. This is what Murdered Soul Suspect was supposed to be. Kind of, but you're not investigating your own murder. 
No. You're investigating the disappearance of a child, which may be better. Ethan Carter, right? <laughs> but you're seeing premonitions of events that have happened that might give you clues on why he disappeared. Right. Like maybe maybe the premonitions are of dead people. Maybe they're just you're seeing the past. I'm not sure. Uh, everyone was pretty amazed by the graphics, though, considering it's such a small developer, a small studio. This is their first game, and I think they're from Poland. Um, it has a lot of people from People Can Fly. Do you know who People Can Fly are? Yeah, um, that's actually the uh, one of the groups that actually took part in making Bullstorm. Bullstorm, exactly. So it's an ex people from People Can Fly, um, and as I said, it, it looks like it's going to be kind of a, mur uh, a murder mystery, or at least a, a, a disappearance mystery. Yeah. We don't know for sure that the child died, but that's what you're looking into. It looks like it could be pretty cool. Um, after that, a game that really excited took me. Took me by surprise. Took too. me by surprise as well. But the moment I saw the graphics, I looked at Mike and I was like, that is Ninja Theory right there. Right. And I was right. Well, not, you didn't look at me. I was about ten, not even ten. I was, I would say about four minutes ahead of you guys. Yeah. And you and Dean were constantly yelling at me. Yes. <laughs> because I was getting excited before you had no idea what I was talking about. Um, now, Ninja Theory, I'm sure you guys know, they worked on Heavenly Sword first on PlayStation 3 as almost a launch game. Then they moved on to Enslaved, and then they did the Devil May Cry reboot. Now, a lot of people, right when they saw the face of this girl right here, they were like, that looks like Kai from Heavenly Sword. Now, the funny thing about this game is it's called Hellblade, right. which Hell, obviously, is the opposite of Heaven. And no, is it? Blade is another... Another way of saying sword. So, see, I always thought the opposite of heaven was like tuna. That is not true. It's hell. <laughs> so, a lot of people think this is kind of like the anti heavenly sword. And maybe, maybe Kai, thank you for the friend request, Rain0929, maybe Kai is going down into an afterlife of sorts. Maybe Sexual and death is our friend. Yes. You, we're your friend as well, man. Definitely. Thanks for joining. This is his first time coming into the show. We really appreciate that, man. Um, but that would be pretty cool if Kai was trying to bring Noriko back to life. Maybe she's going to the afterlife to find her. And I kind of, uh, you ever see Robin Williams? Speaking of Robin Williams, you know, R.I.P. But uh, his movie, um, What Dreams May Come. Have you ever seen What Dreams May Come? Where Robin Williams goes into the afterlife to find his wife that no, committed suicide. Actually. Beautiful movie. Um, and uh, I wonder if this is kind of what it's like. Maybe Kai, who is the sister of Noriko, is going into hell to try and bring her back. Or at least some kind of dark demise. What's the guy's name? I just want to say that Anthony and I are in the chat room with you. Yeah. So if we're not actually talking, it's because we're typing. Yeah, they're, talk they're talking with you guys in the chat room. A lot of people in the chat room have said, <laughs> uh, right when watching that trailer, Wind Waker yes. meets Eco meets Last right. Guardian. Last Guardian, yeah. Yeah, it, it has those vibes it for looks, sure. It looks like, yeah, yeah, like, it's their answer to the Last Guardian since the Last Guardian's never going to come out. Exactly. Stop That's saying his name! Oh my god! You're not allowed to say his name. We already decided. It's like Voldemort. We don't speak we his are, name. We're, she! The game that, that will not be named. It's funny that a lot of people, not a lot of people, but I oh, see some people in the chat room say Indie Station with like a, a sad face, and that's fine, that's your prerogative. What did I do? But, um, <laughs> this is my favorite game of the entirety of Gamescom. So I don't give a crap if this game is Indie or full retail, if it's 20 or 30 or 60, I don't care. This game looks my cup of tea right here. That was me. Like, this is exactly him. what the kind of games I want to play. It looks like Kingdom Hearts. It has some Kingdom Hearts vibes, like with no, the, the colors. It reminds me a lot of, the mechanics remind me a lot of Brothers almost. Brothers. Like. brothers. I think the most obvious like relation is I know, Eco. Oh, Eco. Okay, Eco yeah, yeah. is the most obvious. A little boy traveling yeah. an unknown world, trying, get, trying to get to the top of a tower. In Eco, you're trying to get to, not to a tower, but you're trying to get Yorda out of like a castle with a tower and all this kind of stuff. Right. It just, it definitely feels like Tequila Works is is pulling from not like they're not copying they're using it as inspiration because eco is a it's a classic at this point it came out in 2002 or something like that and it's never gone away people remember that game very fondly same with shadow of the colossus eventually the same with the game who should not be named you probably i hope let's take a call real quick from jay there's oh man see if it connects i hope Come on now. Come on now. Did you know that I'm just here for views and I don't, you know, that's my only purpose? That's what people say. Yeah. Well, that's, that's yeah. one one guy We're just being an asshole. There's a guy out there We're just here to look pretty. Never mind. Okay, I'm going to try and call G back real quick, see if it works. You know, there's such a thing as being fashionably, like, late to a party, but yeah, the game that will not be named, it's just getting a little ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, Jay. Hey, what's going on, bud? How you doing? 
We haven't been too bad. Very nice. What do you yeah, want to talk about, James? I want to talk about a couple of games, actually. Um, a few rumours going around about um, Zombie on Advanced Warfare. What about it, exactly? Yeah, zombie mode, I think. Uh, I've heard there's going to be zombies coming on Advanced Warfare and it's going to be like robot zombies or something. Robot zombies. Okay, that makes a little more sense because zombies right. is something Treyarch does. Mm -hmm. And each each developer, yeah. it seems like, tries to do their own thing. This time, Aliens was uh, Infinity Wards. So, robot zombies, what do you think of that? I... I don't know, I never got into that whole mood. What does that even mean, first of all? Robot zombies. I don't uh, really understand that. I See, my thing is, though, I never got into that. I'm the worst one, even though I was really good at those games, I played them all the time before, like, I, I'm the worst one to ask because that is a mood I never got into. Okay. Just, like, at all. Even on the first Black Ops and everything when they came out with it, that was just something I never did. So, I mean, what do you, like, are you a big Call of Duty fan? Um... I wouldn't say a big Call of Duty fan, I do, but I prefer the Zombies I'm fan, got Black Ops. Okay, no, I'm not saying I love the Zombies on that, I love the storyline and everything. Right, now, are you. I've completed every single Easter egg on as well. <laughs> yeah, and that's extensive too, it's its own single player game yeah. mode in itself. Now, are you, yeah. are you interested in Robot Zombies, whatever the hell that means? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. I'm in debates about getting uh, advanced warfare for it. So um, what I'm going to do is probably watch food streams on it and go from there, really. Yeah, yeah I mean, now I'm always you... thought about some being a trail of fame, really. Right. Now, what would you say? Someone else said in the chat just now, what if not zombies? What if it was like Terminators? I was thinking. That would be pretty awesome, actually. Yeah. I think that would be a better. That would be cool. yeah. that would be so legit. Like yeah. exoskeleton, like, exoskeleton like, just coming at you with red eyes glowing. That, that yeah, that would be that would be better. I mean, I mean the zombies. Yeah, that, that's make great. up make up for the horrible movie that was Terminator Two and that was introduced coming. Terminators. <laughs> that is sarcasm, by the way. Hundred percent sarcasm. We all know Terminator Two is an awesome yeah. movie. Greatest movie of all time. <laughs> but. Uh, no, and another game I was gonna want to talk about is um, the new Infamous um, First Light. Yeah, they had a little yeah, little new. sneak peek trailer at the beginning of Gamescom. It was one of their like, kind of like pre-show trailers, and uh, it just showed off a little bit more of the gameplay. They're obviously going all out with this. They gave her an entirely new move set, her own animations. Like this is not just like a like a reskin of of Delson with neon powers. This is this is definitely its own yeah. game. Um, and that's really cool. I hope it, I hope it runs a good three to four hours, kind of like Left Behind. Uh, this is the kind of DLC I enjoy. Like, expands on the story with a little bit of like a an add-on, and I think that's a great idea. Yeah, because um, what I was talking to my mate about it, I, and I said, oh, what I think they're going to do is like, do the storylines of all the characters that you could um, get their powers from and like do their backstories to how they become when you meet me. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm I really think excited. that's what really you're Yeah. I, I, I yeah, keep forgetting about that one. I wonder if I'm going to pick it up. I'm not sure if I will. I, I think I probably will though. I think I will so. grab it. It's very, if it's 15 bucks, I think I will. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think it's it was a good enough game and yeah, I, I, would like, I would like to go back into that world a little bit. I must know I'm definitely going to pick it up, but I'm hoping I'll be able to pick it up next week because um, I'm going to be moving into it. I'm not sure if I can pick it up in time or not. Okay. Off the store. Yeah, definitely. All right, man, we're going um, to move yeah. on to the rest of Gamescom real quick, but thanks so much for calling in. Yeah, catch you guys later. You have a good night. All right, you well, thanks, too. Jay. Right, another great call from Jay there. Thank you so much, man. We're going to move on to the next uh, talk real quick. I'm not going to show a trailer for thanks, it. Thanks, Warrior. We're running yeah. a little late. Destiny was shown off. Uh, sorry, we're going to skip calls for just now, guys. Uh, Destiny was shown off with some new Crucible footage. Looks great. Showed off some other modes. Uh, they're, obviously, it's, it's Bungie. They're going to have... Their multiplayer is going to be fleshed out. Right. Probably more so than their single player. Either. Yeah, I'm getting psyched though. Yeah, definitely getting psyched for that. But nothing new. I mean, really. Not too much new, yeah. for sure. Uh, they did say that there's going to be a DLC mm -hmm. that is coming. Uh, they already announced that. We I can't remember what that. the name was. Mm -hmm. But it's coming to everything at the same time. PlayStation right. 4 does not have an, an advanced on yeah. that. Uh, Shadows of Mordor. How, what do you think of this game? I don't want to give my opinion on it. It looks... I, I think, considering that it's a story told outside of the straight, like, Lord of the Rings film stuff, 
It's kind of expanded on the Silmarillion and stuff like that. They're taking some liberties there. I think it looks pretty cool. It obviously, um, it, it's, hey Arnold, this show's about two and a half hours. We're, we're going to wrap up pretty soon, probably. No, uh, we're going to find out the uh, name, though. We will, once Next we get past Sony. No. Um, no. But I think, obviously, it pulls from Assassin's Creed. It pulls from Batman, yes. Arkham Knight, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and stuff like that. It pulls a lot from Assassin's Creed. Yeah, it really does pull a lot, gameplay-wise. But it, it looks promising. I, I don't have much more to say than that. But trailer-wise, let's check out this trailer here for Until Dawn. Because this was a game that was first shown off for PS3 as a move-centric title. It got kind of canceled, everyone figured out, and moved to PS4. But they didn't just boot, like, reboot it over or like port it over. This is entirely revamped with a new graphical engine. And it's not even just any graphical engine. They're using the Shadowfall graphical engine. Uh, which I think is awesome, because you can tell, too, this game looks a lot better than I was expecting. Facial animation, all that kind of stuff looks really great, and they have a lot of time left, I think. I, I have a feeling this is a year away still. I have a feeling this will be a Halloween 2015 release. Oh, so they've, awesome. got, they've got a lot of time to, to make this game look better. Um, Hayden Panettiere is in it. They've, yeah. got, they've got a cast of eight people. Um, and the idea is it's kind of like Heavy Rain, where you control all these different characters, and what you decide to do could result in the death of these teenagers at a cabin, you know, classic B story horror film mm -hmm. style, and every much cabin, a lot of car uh, cabin in the woods, very much of cabin in the woods. So they go to the cabin to memorialize a friend of theirs that died actually, and it turns out that a slasher killer is stalking them. Um, you know, it, they're not they're not really going all out seriousness here. This is obviously kind of tongue in cheek a little bit here. They're not taking this themselves too seriously, and that's what's kind of fun about it. It's, it's got like hateable characters in a good way. You know how the, all those beast movie horror films, it's like these characters are so stupid and stuff like that? That's what they're going for here. It looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. Every single character can die by the end of the game, yeah. or every character can live. Right. There's gonna be a lot that's of endings. The that you make. They said they're it's like saying- uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, in, not in that you control it, but in that right. you, you know, all these characters can die. There's a lot of different ones all being tested. In it's a like way. the R.L. Stein of video games. Yes. Um, it's going to have hundreds of endings, they're saying. So that's pretty cool. I don't know what that means exactly as far as variations on the ending, but always good uh, to have more games like this in the industry kind of taking from Heavy Rain and beyond. Yes. Moving on from that... Let me acknowledge a question real quick from Ethan, who called in earlier. He wants to know our feelings on Surgeon Simulator. We saw the video. It looks fun. I, I, watched, I watched playthroughs. Have you watched it? It was annoying to watch. It's, it's annoying to watch because the idea is that it's really hard to control your hands. It's kind yeah. of slapsticky in that way. Kind of like uh, Octodad. Exactly. So the guys are just like trying to grab things and they're knocking things over and slapping the, the patients in the face. Can I say and... what the most annoying part was? Yeah. The one guy, you, you have to crack the rib cage. Yeah. Like they have bone cutters and saws, and he's just like he got like um a, a hammer. No. He got a hammer. No, but the first thing he got was like a scalpel. Oh yeah, the first thing he grabbed was a scalpel. I don't like right, a yeah. scalpel. Why are you trying to cut a rib cage with a scalpel? And then he got a hammer just instead a of like hammering. Just a rib cage. No, but instead of doing that, he's just going like this with it. Oh yeah, he's like rubbing it like an xylophone. And he's just like breaking up the rib cage, and it's like, you have, a, like you have a bone cutter right there, bleeding out, and like he dies in like 10 minutes every time. Uh, so it's frustrating to watch people that don't know how to play, but it looks like a lot of fun. Like a bone cutter, use a, a saw. And anytime somebody does play it on Twitch, everybody's flocking to it. It's, right. a, it's really fun to watch, Surgeon Simulator. So it looks like a lot of fun. Moving on from that, next game here, really quickly, um, is Drive Club. Now we're just showing this off for the graphical, really, more than anything, um, because this shows off the atmospheric effects. What? So no, we're not. I don't think we're we'll probably do a wild game, game up here. Just, we're not going to have enough time. Um, but you said it. I mean, the, the sky in this game. like they Right, that, so was, much that was the best part of it. Like, it's really funny. Like, you go through this whole thing and everything looks gorgeous. Yeah, it just reiterates how much effort they put into these cars and the terrain and the weather and the dynamic changing. You know, all that stuff. But the funniest part to me was the thing that blew me away was how much detail they actually put in. At the end of the trailer, I would actually recommend anybody go watch this. Um, even if you're not into racing games, just because at the end of the trailer, you actually see it float up to the top over the clouds, and it just, it's phenomenal. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's vast. It's, it's dynamic cloud effects with right. uh, god rays coming through the clouds in a realistic way. Um, everything is so dynamic in this game. They put so much detail and heart into it that it's really phenomenal, and I hope that the gameplay matches the visuals. Because if it does, this is going to be a great 
arcadey mm-hmm. racing game. Uh, not quite full simulator. I'm excited to get it. Yeah, I, I mean, everybody does. We all get this right. game in a month or two, guys. I think October is when it comes out. Um, October, October 11th, 11th, right? Uh, and it has a PlayStation Plus version, which is the full game except minus cars and levels. It has right. all the features, all the modes, all that kind of stuff in there. It's just you're going to have less cars and less tracks. Right. But otherwise, it's a game. It's like a full game. So I, I'm really excited to play it. And if it's that good, maybe I'll pick it up for sure. After that... This is our favorite trailer, I think, that we saw the entire night, right? Such a funny trailer. Do we want to put up the volume on this one, yes. maybe? Let's Previously at E3, the box has been upgraded with new abilities and motor solid glide, phantom pain. Yeah. But for players, more options. Such as the ability to pop out, take enemies out, and hide back in the box. The box mechanics are something that's... You can also use the Fulton from within the box. That's the Fulton that you see from uh, Peace Walker, where you can take people back to your base. It's kind of ridiculous, but that's the point. Now, this guy's starting to to see the box here, right? And when you're in trouble, you can even vacate the box and use a decoy, what draws the attention of the enemy. So he jumps out of the box there and moves on. And Today, the box stays in place. A few more ways you can use the cardboard box to your advantage. It's not actually that's so hard. In plain sight here with the ending of the hit, we can't vacate the box. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a joke. You can actually do this. really in the game. So you can stand up the box like this, and then on the other side of the box is a picture of a soldier. From a distance, you can use this to trick enemies into thinking you're an ally, and they'll pass you My favorite part of this was that Drew didn't actually get his screen cut out when the conference was going off. He opens up the box. And then shoots a guy in the face. But Drew missed this lot. Yeah. So he didn't stop there. There so are also other pictures you can place the, on the yes, box. The recap on Tuesday night. For example, he watched this for the first time, and his reaction was. We're in a similar situation now. But guys, we're gonna open up the lines so again for right. one more segment at the end of uh, oh, the Sony trailers, which we're almost done with. This one, he puts oh, a it. model on the box, and then shoots the guy. I love how smooth that is too, man. That looks great. Now it looks like we have a bed of roses. At first glance, yes, but if we were to unfold the box, you'll see that it's actually another view of our swimsuit model. And if we vacate the box and leave it here, it actually serves as a great tool to draw the attention of enemies and keep them distracted as we sneak away. Oh, man. It's just a good example of the many new things you can do with the cardboard box. And you can put a place in all the surprises just yet. Thank you it's for really the friend request. Tiger power. Tiger power! Uh, so yeah, that game looks like a ton of fun, but also very somber and depressing otherwise. <laughs> That's what's so good about it, though, is that Hideo Kojima still inserts that kind of campiness and quirkiness. So it's going to be from Gear Solid. I think I'm going to skip away. this one real quick, guys, just because we're running out of time. But this is Tearaway, which uh, is being remade, essentially, on uh, PlayStation 4. Uh, so that's pretty cool, because Tearaway is a great oh, game. Man. A great game on the Vita, and I really hope that more people play it on yes. the PlayStation 4, because it has so much magic and creativity. It, it's really worth picking up, guys. So check that out when it comes out, I'm, I'm sure, next year. After that, we're going to go over Alienation real quick. I think this is a short trailer. Yeah. Um, obviously, this is Housemark who did mm-hmm. Dead Nation. Which is which so is, awesome. Game. This is like a play on words on that. You got Dead Nation, and I got Alien Nation. So this is pretty much Dead Nation with aliens. Um, and it looks like it has a lot more co-op functionality, too. Uh, but, I mean, all the particle effects, all the lasers and bullets going on on screen here is pretty phenomenal. I'll skip forward. Yeah, I was going to say, it's just... Um, but it, so you guys can see all this is going on constantly. I mean, it even looks a lot like Dead Nation. So yeah. You can see they didn't change anything. Looks really good, um, though. Thank you for the friend request, Chuska. Um, but they're still building off of the... There you go, Alienation. Or like that. But that's Alienation. Uh, watch the trailer for that. But this is one of my... This is probably my second... It's this. just closing it out. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that definitely looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, and if Rezogun is any indication, it could be one of the best little small right. games on PS4 in the future. And then finally... This is my one of my second new game, favorite new games that was shown off. Yeah, definitely. Probably actually my favorite new game that was shown off in general. Now, if you guys remember, Kristen talked a story uh, the week before Gamescom about Wild Sheep Games, and we found out that it was the developer of Rayman and Beyond Two Souls, Michelle Ansel, who... Uh, who left Ubisoft and started Wild Sheep Studios, and we were like, okay, that's cool. And then a week later, right? Not even a week also, later. Bam! Guess what? We have this. Yeah, exclusive, 100%. I think to PS4. Oh, uh, is it? Uh, yeah, I, that's what I'm hearing. A huge grab by Sony yeah. here. If this is the case, even if it's timed exclusive. Now, what's huge interesting grab. is all everything you see. So you have the human, you have a boar, uh, you have a wolf and a falcon. It looks like and a yeah. skeleton. Yeah. A skeleton king, whatever. Yeah. Um, and each one is playable. Um, and I feel like they're going to add different things to the story. I feel like in order to get the 100% 
you know, feel of the game you're gonna want to, you know, play as each character. Yeah. But it definitely has some, you know, magical supernatural yeah, effects to it. Effects. That was an enormous um, giant right there. Right. But it looks like you hunt a lot. It looks like you can take control of animals at points. That's an enormous catfish right there. Mm -hmm. um, the graphics look great, especially considering it's probably still a year away. Where so there's a wolf. It seems turning into a woman. No, um, you just or hiding among them. Yourself, yeah. it, but considering the magic of this trailer, I wouldn't be surprised if there's morphing animals. This is awesome. I love this. I, I can't wait to see if you can really become close with these pets if you want to. Right. Well, that. I think I think the one thing was I think you're supposed to take control of each character. I think so, yeah. You know, not at the same time, not in one playthrough. I think you're going to play through as a wolf, and then you're going to play through as a boar, and then as a falcon, everything like Good that. Good night, so. Cyclone. Chuska, uh, well, thanks for the friend request again. Everything is playable, according to Chuska. That is awesome news. I mean, that's really cool if that's the case. Um, so that was the closer for Sony's conference. Uh, people were kind of expecting Uncharted a little bit, but that actually is a really big announcement right there, especially if it's 100% exclusive, yeah. because that is a legend with the within the video game industry. Michelle Ansel has been around for 20 years, and he's made some of the best games in the industry. The guy knows his stuff, and uh, this is his first game from a new studio. So that's really exciting. All right, guys, let's open up the lines. We're not going to do Wild Game this week. We went a little long with... Uh, with our Gamescom discussion, but we would love to talk to you about Gamescom. So we're gonna open up the Skype lines. Actually, they are open. So please call in on Skype. Can Mike share his name now, please? We have a guest. Is our guest Jerome? Uh-huh. It's up to you, We man. think Mike's name is... And I think most people in the chat room also yes, think that Mike's majority. name is Jerome. We think his a name lot of is... people still are going with Frederick. Okay, we got Michael here. I don't think it's Frederick only because... <laughs> Hey, M Mike, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, how you doing? Hey, your your mic is back. We better. actually understand you. Yes, uh, actually, it's my, it's my brother. I, I oh, okay. Me. Okay, yeah, well, this is great. I'm glad that we can understand your voice a little better right now. What do you want to talk about, Mike? Yeah, first of all, uh, I agree with you what you say about this game for the kids, uh, the way they kill them, I mean, the roller coaster or in the car. You remember when you talking about it early? I'm sorry? I, I couldn't really understand the last part of that. Mike, could you say that again? Uh, I agree with you when you say about this game, when, when the people die in, when you crush when the roller coaster. Oh, oh scream ride. ride. Right? Do it's you, nuts. Do you yes. think that it's a little it's, bit creepy? I, I, it's, I have a nephew, so I want to keep playing these kind of games. Yeah, and, and the thing is, like, it, it, otherwise it looks like a, a fun-hearted right. kind of game. You're making roller coasters. You're like the thing that people love to do in Roller Coaster Tycoon is make the really extreme coasters, and that's what you get to do in this game. But then it adds this element of, of like terror to it, and it kind of took me by surprise. And I, I know people say all the time, like, "What are you talking about? You kill tons of people in Call of Duty and stuff like this." It's just like the nature of the game, though. It's cartoony. It, it looks like a fun-hearted game until that moment, and it just kind of took me by surprise. And uh, I, I don't know how to feel about it. <laughs> it is true, it is true. Uh, the second one uh, about uh, PT, I remember the, the first time it was released, uh, many people, only one person is seen finish. The, uh, the others, it was loose. Even people quit in the game. But now I think that it's, it's able to uh, finish the game. Yeah, it, it originally, like, he, you know, he was expecting it to take a lot longer for everybody to finish. But it was finished much quicker, um, and then it was everybody started getting an idea of how to do it. You know, it was everybody was able to finish it. Drew took yeah. a little bit longer than most people. There's obviously like a certain sequence of events that you have to do at the end of the game for that final puzzle, but I do think it's a little bit randomized. I think Hideo Kojima kind of put it in as an algorithm of sorts to make it so that everybody gets a different puzzle at the end. And because of that, it just it's, it's taking people forever. Some people uh, are playing. PT for six hours before they can finally get that final puzzle, and it's a little frustrating. I think they could have done a little bit without that. I understand why they made it so tough, because they wanted to make the teaser very secretive, and they didn't want people to find it, and maybe until, like Mike said, weeks down the road, that didn't happen. So it turned out to just kind of be a little bit of a frustration, but otherwise, I thought it was amazing, and probably the best way I've ever seen to announce a game. It's true. I think it's a combination about Silent Hill 4 and Silent Hill 2. Yeah, and Silent Hill 2, I think, is a lot of people's favorite, yeah. but for sure. And that has one of the best endings, for sure, in a game uh, ever, potentially. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be great. Having Guillermo del Toro attached is almost good, too good to be true, we were saying. It's unbelievable. Okay, guys. All right, Mike. All right, see you later, Mike. Uh, should I call back? Uh, yeah. See you, Mike. 
Um, should I call back John? He's been calling a lot tonight. You know what? You know what the funny thing is about that game though, the the roller coaster one mm -hmm. is when you would play like roller coaster tycoon and stuff like that. What was like? That was like the what was, like yeah the motivation, the motivation was, was to make a bomb and this, stuff. But you and, didn't like, know what they looked like. There's a difference, and you couldn't like, hear you them scream, them scream like, like that. that. Yeah. Alright, let's try uh, John's Skype here. He might have been trying to call from his mobile, actually, so that, that might be why it wasn't working. We watch movies like Final Destination and stuff like that all the time. I need a stretch. Applejack says Norman Reedus. I need to stretch. Yeah, same here. This is killing me. Hey, John, you're on the Level Up show. How you doing, man? Hey, how you doing? Oh, sorry we couldn't get you earlier. We were having trouble answering your questions. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. We couldn't get you earlier. We were having trouble answering your calls, but we got you now, so what do you want to talk about? Uh, I got a couple things. Uh, first of all, I heard you guys talk about uh, advanced warfare. To me, it looks like a, it looks like straight Titanfall. Uh, yeah, you know, and it's kind of weird. It's like, do you do you think that this is an answer to Titanfall, or do you think they've been working on this long enough that it's just a coincidence? I don't know, because Robert Bowling left, you know, Infinity War to make Respawn. Yeah, and it's kind of like coincidental that all of a sudden, like the next Call of Duty game is. It's so similar, like, it's uncanny, like, I don't, to me, it's, it looks like Titanfall 2. Yeah, it, it does in a way, and do you, do you consider that a negative, or are you happy about that? Um, I think Call of Duty needs to go back to its roots, man, like, all this vertically stuff, I mean, to me, that promotes camping, I mean, it, it doesn't bait the people who run and gun, like, who wants to run and gun, and then all of a sudden you do a boost jump, and somebody's behind you, like, to me, that, that, it doesn't it is really a little scary, yeah. I agree. I mean, it, it all depends on the balance and the way they do it. I mean, we can't really know for sure until people have their hands on it. But uh, I understand your fears because that is the truth. I mean, uh, the moment people saw that in the reveal trailer, like the guy jumping, boosting behind the person in front of him, it's like, oh my god, this could be abused in a crazy way. Because really, there's no limitations right now, I think, on the boosting. You can just boost left, right, forward, down. There's no, like, recharge even on your boost. It's like, oh my god, this could be this could be ridiculous. Like, No, there's, there's recharge. Uh, not yeah, really, right. from what I'm seeing. Like, it seems like guys are just boosting all over the place, and the moment they land again, they're boosting again. It's like, it doesn't seem like there's much limitation, in my opinion. Exactly, and another thing I think, uh, um... Um, another caller was talking about the robot zombies. Um, I don't know if there's going to be robot zombies, but I do think there's going to be some kind of co-op multiplayer, something oh, like sure that. Yeah, I, I hope there's co-op. I, I mean, have to imagine. The other ones. I say, I say that because I say that because if you look at the having uh, the Advanced Warfare Edition, the Xbox One, if you look on the controller, it has like the little, you know, the, the tally marks. Do you know how when you go through a level in zombies, the tally marks happen? Yeah. They have it on the controller, so I'm thinking there's some kind of co-op. Okay, that would be cool. I mean, yeah. co-op is always a great idea. I mean, um, and especially, it seems like this one is going to have a pretty cool story mm -hmm. uh, campaign. So, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't mind playing through that campaign with somebody. Yeah. Uh, especially with through yeah. PlayShare. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Spacey. Exactly. Another thing about it that is uh, the PS4 systems and the Xbox One system. The Xbox One actually launched a uh, one terabyte hard drive. Yeah. With, I think some bucks. Yeah, but PS4, did you take that out of uh, I mean, you can yeah. take it out of the news. You no, know, spark hard drive out, but 500 gigs is not a lot of space. I have 14 games installed on my, and I already have to delete stuff. Yeah. I mean, this are, this game's probably only going to be like. It's probably gonna have eight to nine more years on this game cycle. I mean, or do we have to delete games every time we install? I mean, it might get to that. Huge... But the hope is, right, that we can start using USB external hard drives at some point. I, I, I hope. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Xbox One already offers a one terabyte hard drive. I mean, yeah. 500 gigs is not a lot. I mean, as the generation goes on, we'll, we'll be getting upgrades in, in hard drive. I mean, if you remember when the PS3 first started, it was a 20 gig and a 60 gig, and it ended now with a 500 gig. So as, as the generation moves forward and as hard drives become cheaper, you're going to see new bundles of the PS4 with terabyte, two terabyte, and up eventually, I would imagine. Of course. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I hope so, because you're right. It's going to run out. All right, you're talking about Gamescom uh, 2014. Are those games that we see, are those actually like set in stone games that are ever going to come out? Or do you think there's going to be any delays? Because that looks like that's the new trend in 2015. It is. All these games right. getting delayed. I was looking for so many games. The Witcher, the Dark Arkham Knight, there's so many games. Battlefield Hardline. It's like that's the new trend now, like delayed games. Well, How come they're putting out games, release dates, if they can't meet them? You know, even Drive Club was supposed to be a launch. Yeah, that was a big delay. 
came back almost a year later. Yeah. And the thing is, I don't think you'll see a lot of cancellations. That doesn't no, typically happen. Yeah, cancellations. I mean, the thing with the delays or anything like that, there are some that I understand. You know, that are completely reasonable. Others that don't make any sense, like Evolve. You know, which doesn't make a damn bit of sense. Yeah, to I don't really anybody. understand that. Um, and, and I get it. I don't think you're gonna see. I think they know that people are not liking the whole. Oh, we got the lead. I, I, the problem is, I think a lot. A lot has to do it with the companies like Sony and Microsoft saying, "Listen, we need games. We need you guys to show these. You know, if you think there's any chance that you could be ready by X date, show them off in our conference." Yeah. And that's what they did. And obviously, right. they weren't able to deliver on all of that. So it kind of hurt them, but at least gave them something to show for the conferences. You know what I think is one of the weirdest ones is uh, Batman: Arkham Knight. Because remember, the release date on Arkham Knight was announced, and then like. Less than a month later, yeah. they delayed it until next year. Like, a huge right. delay. It's like, didn't you, like, have a feeling, like, three weeks ago that you'd be delaying this game? Right. Enough that you that, wouldn't announce that, a solid release date? It was really bizarre. You, are you still there, there John? Uh, yes, I'm here. I was just, uh, I mean, I, we're talking about delays. I mean, so I think... You're going to be seeing delays next year as well. Right. It happens every single year, so I think get used to it in a way. Yeah. It even happened last generation. So. Which is not, I don't think you're going to get as bad as you did this Maybe year. Maybe not. It happens and, early and, in the generation and, more, but... Yeah. Yeah. All right, John, thanks so much for calling in, man. Those are good questions. Well, thank you. I appreciate your show, man. Keep it coming, man. I enjoy your stream. Oh, thanks, thanks a lot, man. Thanks for calling in. Have a good night, bud. Bye, right, guys. Jeez. Did you see that thing behind you? I did. What was that? Don't do that. All right, uh, we'll take one more call, guys. It's the bell, man. It's a lot of calls. It's almost yeah. I know. I just want to take one no. more. No, why? I, just because we, we we didn't take a lot of calls tonight at all. Do we? That's all we did. Why yeah. do you think we're running so late? Well, because we because we're at Gamescom. That's why. No. no, let's take one more call if we can. One more call, guys. We cut out top. We cut out a lot of game appears. So we could take calls. I was thinking. Um. Whatever, boss. <laughs> What? It's, it's 2.40. It's 12.30.40. Uh, I'm not that concerned. Guys, we'll take one more call. One more short call. Make it an audio call, please. As Why don't we, while we wait, Mike, just tell us his name. <laughs> That's it. Our guess is Jerome McLaughlin. Is that correct? So is Nate Dogs. Yeah, but everybody keeps saying Frederick. Which one is it? No. We and picked, it's not McLaughlin, we, by the way. Okay, fine. Well, we picked Jerome. Well, we're never going to guess your last name. Come on. I don't, picked, I don't even know that one. We picked... You don't know? No. Really? That's All interesting. Right. We picked Jerome. Yeah, you got to yeah, answer. Is we, it Jerome? We picked Jerome. Is his name Jerome? We'll find out next week. Thank you Thank for the you friend request. Now, you have to tell us. There's yeah. so many people in here that... It is. That yeah, was okay. the deal. You have to tell no, us. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, it's Jerome. Oh! Jerome! Jerome! Jerome. <laughs> All right, so do you know who said Jerome? It was Sanders3435. He guessed it. <laughs> Shout Jerome. out to Sanders. Sanders, you got it, man. Good job. That was, that was one mystery down. <laughs> How do you spell it? The way they embrace Sin did. Uh, was it with a, a, a J -E. or an E? J -E. J -E. J -E. That's exciting. All right. I feel like you might have told me that at some point in your life, but Mike's I completely forgot. Mike's name is forgot. Jerome. Jerome. Sanders, Good work, junior detectives. Sanders thirty four thirty five guessed All right. it. And while also while we're waiting for a call, I'll wrap up the show so we can get out of here. Guys, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Oh, there it is. Let's take take the call, Carlos. A, a, a routine call. A very good way to end the show. Make sure our volume's up. Here. Come on, Carlos, come through. Carlos! Hey, what's up? Um, what's going on, bud? You get to close out the show this week, man. What's going on? First up, hello, Mike. Excuse me. Christian, Drew, Rotating Chair, and Jerome. Jerome! You're the Rotating Chair now. I like that, man. I like the Rotating Chair. Very good. Uh, now Jerome, too. All right. What do you want to talk about tonight, man? Uh... I, I, briefly, I, I kind of think that Until Dawn was kind of comical. I, I don't know if y'all saw the IGN whenever they were yeah. playing it. You no, should really see it. It was yeah. if you saw the hand movements and everything, it kind of remi reminded me of how uh, Robot Chicken's claymations moved. Yeah, the animations <laughs> you know, are laughing. still. Well, early, it's supposed for sure. to be campy too. I think too. I think what a lot of people are talking about though is the animations. Facial animations are really well done because they're motion captured, but it seems like they definitely yeah. still have some work to do on the actual body animation. Right. And I hope they improve uh, that. Uh, 
I hope they kind of keep it that way. I kind of hope they keep it that way. I mean, it, it's one thing, yeah. It's 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 one thing to be kind of realistic, but if they kept that sort of scary yet comedic thing, it would probably keep the game a little more interesting, just continuously going kind of like in a goosebump sort of way. Yeah, I, I can see what you're saying because it definitely is a little tongue in cheek. It's not taking itself seriously, and that's on purpose. I think it's very much intentional to have that B movie horror feel. Um, and it looks, I mean, a lot of people that watched it 20 minutes. A lot of people were excited on how it looked, uh, not even just to play it, but a lot of people were like, I want to watch this too, because it looks like a lot of fun to watch. Um, and everyone's going to have a different playthrough. So I think this is going to be a really big success on Twitch, because every single person that plays it that you watch is probably going to have a different experience. Yeah, I'll probably be watching it. Yeah. I think I'm going to get it, actually, especially if it's next October. I'm hoping it's not this October. No. Like, this Halloween, I'm hoping it's next Halloween, because I really want them to take their time with this and, and make it good, because it looks like it has a lot of promise. Yeah. Definitely. So I'm um, catching you on Tuesday with uh, Diablo 3? Man, I went, to, I went to GameStop today to go finish up my pre-order, and GameStop was closed. So tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah, I, have, I know, it comes out Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you'll be good. I already have it preloading on my system, so I'll play with you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Anything else uh, you want to say? That's about it. That about it? Uh, no more uh, <laughs> No more poison ivy scares? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that's good. I'm glad I, you feel better. I, I, my vacation went off without a hitch for the most part. Very nice. Awesome. Good for you, man. Well, thank you for closing out our show, Carlos. You're a great caller, man. See you, Jerome, Drew, Christian, and Rotating Chair. <laughs> All right, man. See you later. And that's going to wrap it up for us, guys, this week. Uh, we'll close off our show with some of our information real quick, and then we'll we'll shut off. Um, guys, we got up to 290, I think, at one point. We yeah. almost got to 300, but not quite. So we had a good week this week, but we had a lot of fun we'll talking about Gamescom with you guys. Thank you to Brother Anthony for filling in. Thank, thank you to Spitfire Raven. Thank you for, yeah, for your friend request. Anybody else who would like to friend request us, uh, I am Drew M1788, and Mike is the noob guru. And if this you, is Bogey. And this is Bogey, our other cast member right here. If you guys really enjoyed tonight's show, I hope you guys did. Please go on all these different channels. Twitch.tv slash The Level Up Show. That's where we're streaming from. Go on there and heart us. It'll give you email notifications whenever our show goes live. Uh, go on Twitter at The Level Up Show Level, spelled LVL, goodnight, Elvoy. And, uh, and like us on there, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. Go on the levelupshow.com. That's our official website where we put articles, editorials, reviews, and more. Thank you, Skin Mark Steve, for your friend request. Really skin appreciate Mark it. Steve. Yeah, skin Mark, not Skin Mark. And I want to shout out one more time to Sanders3435. Yeah, for Jerome. For guessing Mike's real birth name. Thank you to Ford for your friend request. Uh, guys, if you'd like to check out all of our previous shows and anything we put online moving forward, go to youtube.com slash the level up show, level spelled LBL. We've got a lot of archived episodes on there. Thank you, Sabar Sabaro Sky, I think that's Sabarski. Sabar so so was it? Bornowski? Sub S Bornowski. Skidmarkowski. Bornowski, okay. <laughs> Skidmarkowski? Yeah, something like... weird. Computer is almost dead. You can see it's like My iPad's giving. at two percent. Computer's at seven percent. We're Guys. almost dead. Um, and uh, you, so I, as I was saying, YouTube.com for archives of the show. If you guys really appreciate our show and like to help us grow in the future, uh, we do take new donations at streamtip.com slash T slash the level up show. We're going to be improving the show drastically in the next month. Yes. You guys are going to be Pay pretty attention. surprised. We're going to have a big event we're going to yes. make out of it, trust we, us. We're not going to say too much about it yet, but in the next month, it's going to be real big. Something's going to be happening with this show in the next Lots month. So if you want to help us in that effort, because we do need it, uh, go on streamtip.t slash the level up show and donate whatever you guys see fitting. Uh, that's it for it, guys. We're the level up show. We're a gaming dedicated talk show on every Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Please follow us. Thank you for the friend request, Mad Bro. Really Thank appreciate you, DJ. that. Thank you, DJ. Turn on the uh, turn on the we love you, music Brad. here, real quick, and we love you, end our show in the right way with our intro theme done by none other than. Blue Ignosis, always a big thank you to Blue Ignosis. Yeah. And thank you, Warrior White. Thank you, Warrior White, thanks for watching. Thank you, Warrior White. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome.
time on Sunday.